America is synonymous with winning. The American college football coach, he too is a member of that winning fraternity. Part philosopher, part technician, full-time teacher, mentor, and always the home away from home father. Coaches, they're the vigilant guide to help young men scale to greater heights. And no coach in America has helped his players reach the top as often as Eddie Robinson. Coach Rob, I always believe in one thing. If you're a successful football player, you can be successful in the world. Today, we salute the start of this college football season with the Eddie Robinson Classic. Live from Arrowhead Stadium, the top-ranked Florida State Seminoles and legendary coach Bobby Bowden begin their assault on the national championship as they meet head-on with the Iowa State Cyclones and their Heisman candidate quarterback, the explosive Seneca Wallace. The Eddie Robinson Classic is up next on Fox Sports Network. College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Zara, brings you the fifth annual Eddie Robinson Kickoff Classic. We are in America's heartland as the Seminoles of Florida State, preseason number three, match up with the Iowa State Cyclones. But we had to wait since last January. It is finally here. The Chiefs has have arrived as well to make the four-hour drive from Iowa State. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, alongside Kellen Winslow, NFL Hall of Famer, and also with us, Artie Gigantino. Artie, a former defensive coordinator with the USC Trojans. So now we get together with two teams from the Big 12 and the ACC. Last year, 8-4. and four. Sounds pretty good for the Florida State Seminoles. And by most standards, it would be a good season. A bowl victory over a solid squad from Virginia Tech. But a different story, and expectations are different in Tallahassee. The standard is higher, Joel, at Florida State. Most coaches will get a contract extension and a parade down Main Street for 8-4. and four. But with 17 returning starters, Florida State is thinking national champion. And the guy they want to lead them there is a quarterback, ACC freshman of the year, Chris Ricks, 13 INTs last year. He, this year, he will be an exciting quarterback for Florida State. That experience of 12 football games under his belt will bode well for Florida State this year. Well, the 90s were a very forgettable decade for Iowa State, but a resurgence in the program. In fact, 16 wins over the last two years in back-to-back -back bowl appearances. And the reason they went to a bowl last year is Seneca Wallace, the quarterback. He's the man on this campus up in Ames, Iowa. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate, and this Iowa State offense is tailor-made for him. He can beat you running. He can beat you throwing. Last year, he was responsible for 18 touchdowns. Now, when he gets in the open, don't consider him a scrambling quarterback. He's a runner when he gets in the open field and takes off. He's exciting, to say the least. I can't wait to see him tonight. He scared plenty of teams and coaches in the Big 12 last year. Newcomer in the year in the Big 12. Anytime you see Florida State, it's a legend walking the sideline. Bobby Bowden looking for career win number 324 tonight. And the reason? Iowa State is back in a position of prominence. Dan McCartney. the program back Dan McCarty and what a job he has done with 16 victories over the last two seasons and they're ready for 45,000 plus fans next week of their home opener right here on Fox Sportsnet against Kansas Tony Elk will kick it away and the college football season is just a moment away Talman Gardner Willie Reed back deep for the preseason number three Florida State Seminoles Yelp. And Gardner will bring it out now. What a kickoff by Tony Yelp. Honorable mention, all Big 12 last year as a freshman. And what a start to make Florida State with a start with a long field back at their own 20. Offensively, for the Seminoles, Kidu got every snap as a redshirt freshman last year. The rookie of the season in the ACC, Chris Ricks. Up front, a very experienced group and a huge group. Williams, Brown, Marimbo, Holland. Jones is the tailback. Dean the fullback. Morgan, Bolden, back from injuries. Patrick Hughes, the tight end. And the right tackle, Ray Willis, the sophomore. One of the few 
underclassmen, but he did start half of last season. The dump off on the screen. Bold Wagner, or Bolden rather, on the catch. So the flanker is screen. Brandon Brown, the weak side linebacker, getting to him, but good yardage. Almost nine. Kiyosara starting 11 defensively. Smith, Carstens to Brink, and Coleman. In the 4-3 for Iowa State, Lloyd, Word, Brown. Matt Word, one of the very best in the Big 12. Austin on the corner, like Ellis Hops, Forrest, and Timmons are the two safeties. Greg Jones is single to the backfield. Three wide receivers for the Seminoles. With a gain of nine on first down, it'll be Jones. And he won't get back to the original line. They took away the outside, the left hand, Bo Coleman, along with Jeremy Lloyd, the strong side linebacker. And Lloyd, the senior from Pittsburgh, Texas, really cut him off at the pass. And I'm a little surprised at that play because just from talking to the Florida State coaches, they wanted to air it out early. But when you do that, you give that Iowa State defense a little bit of a lift. Look for them in the next series if they get a first down to air it out a little more. Sit out third and a couple. Jones joined by Dean in the eye. And an audible being called early by the sophomore from Santa Margarita, California, Chris Ricks. Will they use a timeout early? Jones barely back. Ricks trying to get to the first down marker. Slides. It'll depend upon the mark, and he got a good mark across the 30 for the first down. A broken play right there for Chris Ricks and Florida State. You saw Craig Jones, the tailback, come up and try to tell Ricks something. Maybe they had the wrong formation for what they want to run, but Ricks, being the experienced leader, went ahead and just ran the play. You know, Kellen, it was an unbalanced line, whether by default or mistake or by structure. They had the, the outside receiver on the line of scrimmage, which made the tight end ineligible. It's almost procedure. Jones barely back and down in a set position. She stays in there in the eye with B.J. Dean, freshman fullback from Tuscaloosa. Jones leading his way. Big yardage across the 40, a first down out to the 48, a gain of 18, and a special welcome to our friends watching tonight on Comcast Cable of Tallahassee and Fox Sports Net Florida. How would you like to be... How would you like to be in the secondary of Iowa State and you see that big running back, Greg Jones, 6'1", 248. Get loose and come up the middle, virtually untouched. This full momentum coming right at you. And notice where they go when they want to get yardage early in the game behind the All-American number 72, Brett Williams. First down of the carry. A better than 16 yards by Jones. Will they keep it in his hands? Yes. Nifty running by Greg Jones, spinning inside the 45, tripped up there by Ellis Hobbs. Jones, a junior from Beaufort, South Carolina, at 6'1", and he's a load, 250 pounds. You know, you look at this, now watch what happens here. Brandon Brown, number 33, from Iowa State. He's an outside linebacker, he sees it, but he just gets crushed, and he gets, quite frankly, just shaded by the huge offensive line from Florida State. He couldn't see. He got caught up in the double team, Marty. Second and short after the gain of eight by Jones. They stay in the eye, top heavy right side. Jones just waiting for that big offensive line you're talking about to push it ahead. Jeremy Lloyd, the strong side linebacker, the first one in there, but another first down on the carry by Greg Jones, close to the 40 yard line of Iowa State. You know, he's picking up where he left off because in the bowl game last year, he had 120 yards, Kellen, against a number two rushing defense in the country in Virginia Tech. This guy is a good football player, just needs to run the ball more. It's the experience of the offensive line, Artie, giving him the chance to run that football. He's just finding the hole. Yeah, he is. In the eye. And Ricks is going to audibleize. Changes the play at the line, so you can hear the Iowa State fans. And a timeout is called. Give a little credit there to the fans on the near sideline. 40,000 Cyclone fans who made the journey from Ames. The Seminoles first and ten in Iowa State territory when we come back. First drive of the game. Tight end held up a little bit. Patrick Hughes out of his reach. Great play by Jeremy Lloyd with him every step of the way. Lloyd has been involved. 
Young man that grew up 90 minutes east of Dallas, and Pittsburgh, Texas. Honorable mention, all Big 12 last year. Let me remind everybody, game time temperature right around 80 degrees, and the humidity has got to be close to 100%. They have predicted rain. We haven't seen any so far, so fortunate there, but you can understand. Very muggy conditions for the players. Now, second and 10 for the Seminoles. Out of the gun. Ricks thought about the shovel. Flag down in the play. So is Ricks after his short game. Give him about four, almost five. It's a good job that time by the secondary from Iowa State. Obviously not giving Ricks anywhere to throw. He tucks it and goes. You see Ricks, he's making an audible at the line of scrimmage yard. And that time he just threw his guys off as Iowa State jumped back from the charge. Illegal formation on the offense. They had six men on the line of scrimmage at the snap. Five-yard penalty, full second down. You know, Florida State, Joel, looks a little jittery here at the beginning for some reason. I think a lot of this national championship talk, and maybe there's a little bit too much pressure on these guys. Well, at the break, when Chris Ricks called the timeout, went to the sideline, Audie, he was talking to the offensive coordinator, Jeff Bowden. Jeff Bowden, she's Jeff right there. That's, yeah, that's Bobby's little boy. He's his youngest. And Chris Ricks was just very excitable, pointing at the trainers, and another coach came out and talked to him also. Second and 15, will they finally feature Robert Morgan or Anquan Bolden. Couple that missed all of last year, following knee injuries. They double up on the wide side, working from the gun. Ricks with ample time, dumps it. The running back, big yardage, gets the first down. Greg Jones, I think the lunge got him there, and it did. Down to the 30. Is this a good-looking kid or what? I mean, folks, that's 250 pounds in that package. Well, that's the one thing that does stand out when you see him. He is so wide, yet he is light on his feet. You see Ricks in the pocket here. He's sitting back looking, looking. He looked to the middle, then came to the receiver to the outside. Jones checking out the backfield. And after this, this is just, I want that first down. And he got it. You for South Carolina's own. First and 10 Seminoles on a drive that started way back at their own 20. Jones is the single. Works it back to the weak side of the line, and what an open field tackle. Brandon Brown, the only one over there, the weak side backer, and what recovery by Brown. You know, he's only 5'10", 230, a sophomore out of Houston, but he is quick, he's fast, and he's an excellent open field tackler. As evidence tonight, he's already made three tackles in the open field. He's a good player. Artie, you're 5'10", 230, but it looks different on him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I can't tackle in the open field. You know, I'm not getting in the middle of this. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 30. Scoreless, a little more than five minutes gone by. Blitz coming from the outside. They pick up the first man, and Ricks eludes the second. Wide open. Antoine Bolden, will he get to the end zone? Now to the five, and it's first and goal, Florida State. Great read, though, by Ricks to get away from the blitz in the backfield. Well, you saw the athletic ability there of Chris Ricks. He moves around. He avoids the rush. Now watch when he gets outside here. He buys himself some time, and watch where Bolden comes from. He's all the way on the bottom here. He's right there. He's wide open. He's saying, Chris, Chris, here I am. Chris finds him. Bolden catches the ball, gets a little bit of rack, run after catch. That play was made by the quarterback. Senior Nick Maddox has taken over a tailback on first and goal from outside of the five. And it is Maddox. Bouncing outside. First score of the season, yes. The Seminoles of Florida State on the board. Nick Maddox with the touchdown run of five yards. Nick Maddox is a change of pace guy. He's only six feet, 196, Joel. But he's got exceptional quickness as he showed there. The ability already to get to the outside. Thunder and lightning. Jones is thunder. Maddox and Reed, the third tailbacks, are lightning. Different kind of guys, but it's a nice changeup, like you said. Van Fia in for the point after. And the sophomore from Tampa puts the Seminoles up by seven. So Florida State marches methodically with most of it on the ground, 80 yards on their first drive of the season, looking like a potential national champion. Along with Michael Wagner, Bay Thea, 
who last year did a sensational job as a true freshman hit on 13 of 14 field goal attempts. Short one though is going to be brought back. It'll be Montgomery making a miss to the 20 and doing the 24 yard line. So that's where the first offensive series of the year for Iowa State is going to start. And Arkea's era is starting lineup for the Cyclones. Seneca Wallace, the newcomer of the year in the Big 12. Young man from Sacramento, California. Up front, Shelton, Johnson, Butler, Montgomery, and Kale Stubby, the right tackle. Wagner in the backfield along with Joe Woodley, who also you'll see at linebacker tonight. Montgomery, Whitfer, and Danielson. The wide receivers in two of the three, Whitfer and Danielson, were walk-ons. Already. Checking off at the line, Seneca Wallace. Pulling his way past the 25 to the 28, breaking an ankle tackle. Darnell Dockett finally gets him down, and Dockett, one of the keys this year defensively. First team all ACC last year, he's their left tackle. But the end is Emmanuel, Benford the nose guard, and Alonzo Jackson the right end. Bulware, younger brother, you're right, of the Ravens. The exceptional linebacker, Peter Bulware, and Samuels, Brown in the corner, and the safeties, Hall and Ose. So again, call it about four. Out of the gun, Seneca Wallace. And Danielson brought down, no flag throw. Danielson had his heels clipped by Ose. Ball was in the air, and a nice throw by Wallace as he moved the pocket by design. And this is what this young man can do so well. He's extremely accurate, whether running to his right or to his left. Here he goes to his left, which is very hard for a right-handed thrower to do. He delivers the ball, but obviously there's some contact there between Danielson and the defender. It was a non-catchable ball. So it brings up a third and just about six. Wagner and Rutland flanking Seneca Wallace in the backfield. No tight end in the formation. Three wide receivers. Good protection up front. Coming back for the first down. And will they call it a catch? Yes, they will. Jamal Montgomery, the junior from Long Beach, California. Seneca Wallace does a great job of getting back and getting set in the pocket. I was watching him in pregame warm-up. I was a bit concerned about his point of release. Thought he brought the ball down a little bit tight. But here, let's take a look at his form as he sets and throws. You see his shoulder rotating into the throw, and that adds to the control of the ball carrying to the receiver. You know what else they added to it? They had two backs in the backfield that time. They helped him with the protection. Yeah, that was Gotta almost like it. max protection without a tight end. They're in the eye. Wagner bolting as he's tripped up. He gets about three on the carry. We'll see Wagner the first two series, and then as Dan McCartney told us, we'll also see Hiawatha Rutland the third series and find out who's got rhythm early. Wagner is the fastest back in this program in the last 10 years. A junior out of Los Angeles. He went to Bishop Ahmad High School out in the west side or the east side of Los Angeles. Excellent player. West shows side, the east, east side, side, all sides. <laughs> shows the kind of guys that Dan McCartney's recruiting. On the counter, it is Wagner. And he takes it close to the 45 for a gain of about two. Wagner out of the same high school that gave the Colorado Buffaloes Eric B. Enemy, as you talk about Bishop Ahmad. And what about the running backs? Seven consecutive seasons. Iowa State has had a running back with a thousand yard total. And as the Menace Haywood the last two years, before that, Darren Davis, three straight Troy Davis, two years. They have put together some good offensive fronts with some solid backs. But now a third and five. Coming over the back of the wide receiver, trying to get the ball to Lance Young. But the D-back, Stanford Samuels, all over him. Now, that was pass interference. <laughs> NFL, arena football, high school, I don't care where you go, that was pass interference. But that's why you run those slant patterns, because either you catch it or you force the defender, like you're going to see here, Samuels, interference. to interfere with back. the pass being thrown. And he does come all over the top of the back of Lance Young. Excellent call by the official. Samuels got beat inside. He knew it. Instead of giving up the big play, he just ran at the wide receiver's back. He's got some makeup speed, though. You saw it there, and he's also got some jumps because he got in the air. You just got, don't touch him on the back, though. You got to make it up on the side. 
So now a first down in Florida State Semi uh, territory. Seminoles, 48-yard line. Here comes the blitz, perfect for a screen, and it's intercepted. Picked off. Now it'll go the distance. To the 15, to the 10, touchdown. Taking it in for the Seminoles, Alonzo Jackson, the right end, the senior from America's Georgia. What a brutal beginning now for Iowa State. And one thing that Iowa State cannot afford to do in this ball game, they just did. The turnover. If you're going to stay with a team that's going to vie for the national championship, you can't make mistakes like that. Seneca Wallace panicked just a little bit, could have rolled out of that, but didn't want to give up on the screen and threw it right into the hands of Alonzo Jackson. Benneke in. Or check that. It is Bethia in for the point after. And immediately points off a turnover by the defensive end, Jackson. So a letdown early for Seneca Wallace. The opposite end of the spectrum, though, for a defensive end who rarely sees pay dirt. Completion in another first down. Jamal Montgomery with the catch. Well, right now, his quarterback's trying to do it all, and if they can get him or continue to get him on the corner, I think he's got a better chance of success because he's running away from that swarming Florida State defense. Good call by Brick, as we called him in college, to get Seneca Wallace to the outside instead of sitting in that pocket where that devastating Florida State defensive rush can find him. Four wide receivers with three on the wide side of the field. It'll be Wagner. Hooked by the counter, and that should be a 15-yarder. The big guy coming around, Kevin Emanuel, the left end out of Waco, Texas. Inadvertent, but still looked like he got him by the cage. Sometimes when you're off balance like that and you're trying hard, you just reach inside, and unfortunately for Emmanuel, he ended up with the face mask. But Joel, as you said, that's part of this plan here, foul. to spread face the mask. defense out and then hit Wagner and hit Rutland up inside. He didn't actually get the cage. He got inside yes. the helmet. He knew it right away, and he let it go. Didn't want to hurt anybody. It was unintentional. But still 15. But still 15. He's out of the ball game. The coaches want to talk to him, but hey, what can he do? He was just trying to make a play. Third penalty already on Florida State, 27 yards in Markovs. And now from the 31 of the Seminole, something brewing for Iowa State. Keep the tight end in on the left side. Wallace has to deliver in a hurry, and it's intercepted, timed perfectly by Stanford Samuels. So will they say he came down with it or not? Is it a catch? The official says no. it hit the ground. He fumbled it. But Samuel sitting here playing. He's he's watching this play on the outside. He's going to break on it because he feels that they're going to throw this short pass. He watches the set of the quarterback, and bam, he's coming. He's coming. He knows what it is. But Trump, you see it fall right up under him, Marty. It's a three-step drop. Perfect timing. Watch for Iowa State maybe to go a pump and go in the next series or so. Because if the play by the corners is that aggressive, they're setting themselves up for it. Second and ten. Little reverse action. Nothing doing for Lane Danielson. So they tried to decoy it by sending Jack Whitford the other way. It didn't work, though. No, Alan Augustin is a very good player. He's a backup here behind Michael Bowler, 6'1", 221, a junior out of Miami. He's another guy that can just flat fly. He's excellent on special teams. Now, Artie, was that one of those barnyard plays no, that was at not, Iowa State? We no, haven't seen the barnyard. We have not seen. Florida State runs the barnyard. Okay, we're going to okay. So Iowa State with the barnyard. Yes. Now, out of field goal range, even if they don't get the first down, get a good seven or eight. Wagner, Rutland, the two seat of the backfield. Another screen. First catch for Hiawatha Rutland. Not much there inside the 35, but at least he got it close to field goal territory inside the 33. You've got to be impressed when you watch Florida State to see how they fly around on defense. 
Well, that's the one thing that Jack Bricky said earliest in our conversation. He goes, the one thing that stands out is their speed on defense. They rush the pass so that ball is thrown. All of a sudden, you just see them all plant and break on the ball. It's like a swarm of bees going after a hive of honey. Defensive coaches call it that. It's swarming the football. And Mickey Andrews does as good a job as anybody in the country teaching his guys how to swarm the ball. Well, it's going to be Tony Elk, who's 8 of 18, but he's their long-distance guy. It's going to be a 50-yard try. And it's blocked again. He had four blocked last year. So picked up by Samuels. And Florida State's going to have great field position on the block. It looked like B.J. Ward might have been the one to get up and get his hand on the football. B.J. Ward, the free safety, all six foot three. Uh, he must have a, you know, a 40 inch vertical. Already that play reminded me of, you know, back in the day. You know, he was lined up as, as a back guy. He starts forward. Now watch him right here. He's going to come forward and jump right up here, and he times it perfectly. He cannot touch the rear end of a defensive lineman. That's illegal, but it doesn't get any prettier than that in terms of blocking a PAT and field goal. I did the same thing 20 years ago in a playoff game against Miami, but I'm, I'm sure I didn't get up that high. That's going to be a real weapon for Florida State this year. Out of the gun. Good running room again. Nick Maddox, who scored the touchdown with a first down for the Seminoles across the 40 to the 45. So, a nightmare first for Steve Bricky, their offensive coordinator. They get it down with a first down to the 30. Don't get any points. And now pressure because of the solid field position on the defensive unit. And it's demoralizing. And when you look at this Florida State offense, Kellen, whenever Maddox or Reed is in the game, they're going to be in split backs and try to get those guys outside or throw them passes. They're not going to run it up inside with them. Maddox to the outside, Jones to the inside. Absolutely. Is that what you're saying, Artie? Absolutely. We're going to watch that. I'm going to chart it. <laughs> Three wide receivers with bricks out of the shotgun. Heat from the outside adjusted nicely. And what about the moves after the catch by Anquan Bolden? Did they ever miss him last year? 6'2", 225-pound junior. He gets about eight on first down. Now, let's don't forget that Bolden came there as a... Look at the record of Coach Bowden there. U.S. Army leaderboard, Bobby Bowden, with a win tonight, surpassing the totals of Bear Bryant. And starting the night, only four off the all-time leader, Joe Paterno. And Bobby Bowden, as he told us, 72 years old, but he's having fun. He doesn't think about a retirement. It's not part of the equation right now. Good movement. Maddox has the first down on second and two. Boy, what a pull by the offensive line leading the way. Jordan Carson's made the stop, but there's about 40 to 50 pounds. The entire offensive line is back for Florida State, and there is close to 40 to 50 pounds, the average difference between their offensive line and the defensive front of Iowa State. You take a look at that starting offensive line, 1976 average for Florida State. And this is as much as conditioning and diet and supplements and better training that we see receiver, I mean, offensive linemen getting bigger and stronger and faster. First down, Seminole doing whatever they want right there's the now. back, there's the back. Good grab again. Robert Morgan, the senior from Atlanta, another guy out last year with an knee injury, but great protection for Ricks up front. This group has had 75 combined starts. Look at the protection up front. They're all in a two-point stance, and that is called a wall of protection for the quarterback. you got to give the credit on that completion. It's a nice throw and a nice catch, but to the big guys up front, and they might be the best offensive line right now in the country. First down, Florida State. Already up 14, a minute 58 to play in the opening quarter. Rick's trying to buy some time. Now what a nice little seal block he got. Out of bounds, but a loss of about three. So smart play by Chris Ricks as he eludes any kind of shot or the possibility of one forced out by free safety Mark Timmons. That's one of the things the Florida State coaches worked on with Chris Ricks during the summer and during camp was get out of bounds or get down on the ground. We saw him earlier try to do a slide. He didn't get into a complete slide and took a lick in the chest. They don't want this young man taking too many licks because the quarterback behind him is very, very inexperienced. Second down, call it a loss of close to two. 
Jones the only one to the backfield with Ricks. Nice lane to see through and throwing it low in a trap. As trying to come back on it was Calvin Gardner, but it skipped into the breadbasket. But again, a great lane to see through for a quarterback. And when you're in the shotgun, it's a little bit easier to see the passing lanes. And when you're a guy like Ricks, you're 6'4", almost 6'5", it's easy to see those lanes open up. He delivered the ball just a little bit low, get it up a little bit, and it would have been a completion inside the five-yard line. He has got excellent sight down the field, and especially from the shotgun. A little credit to Iowa State on that play. There was some pressure up the middle. Rich was not able to shuffle his feet, take that extra step, and get it the ball, enough up on the ball to get it to the receiver. Well, getting the play in late, and it's going to be a second time out. Offensive coordinator does not like it at all, does he? And that was one of the problems they had last year. Some confusion on the sidelines. Jeff Bowden took over as the offensive coordinator, and they've got to get those wrinkles ironed out. And you see him with the headset on. That's the rarity we see of Bobby Bowden with a headset on. Normally the games are just a blowout. He lets his coaches do their thing, but he has refocused his ball club and trying to get them back to the national championship game. Already 132 yards of total offense on 17 snaps for the Seminoles. Now they need about a dozen to keep the drive alive. Jones out of the eye. Won't get to the record. Iowa State holds. Cyclones desperate for a stop. They got it. We said linebacker Brandon Brown stood him up. And a great hit by Iowa State to come up and knock the helmet off of Greg Jones' head. Get a chance to take a look at it. Iowa State swarming to the football. We talked about Florida State. A good hold by the line. Forcing Jones to the outside. And there's Brandon Short holding him up. The defensive back coming from... You got to get that chin strap a little tighter, man. That, the helmet shouldn't come off from a hit like that. Bad fear. 13 of 14 last year. And it's going to be a 35-yard try. His first of the season. Plenty of distance. And it's perfect. 17 already on the board for the Seminoles of Florida State with a minute 21 still left in the first quarter. Receiver Stovall or Wembley. Will it be Wembley? Yes. Pick Wembley. Now, what a shot on Montgomery. And that ball was jarred loose. And when you've got good athletes that are very fast covering kicks, there's usually great impact at the end of the kick when the return man catches the ball. And that was an example of it. Let's take a look at it. He's yeah. coming up the field. Here's Montgomery. Watch the spin. He's going to take a hit right in the back. Bam! There goes the ball. A receiver who's not very big, you can't afford to get in a spin unless it's an open field. When you turn your back to a guy, he unloads on you. There goes the ball. B.J. Ward, B.J. Ward, who blocked the, yes. field, the field goal, comes down on special teams. The young man who picked it up, Wembley, a freshman from Wichita, Kansas. I guess he's got a few family and friends here. And you know what's starting to happen now because the Iowa State defense has been on the field, it seems like, this entire first quarter. They're starting to get worn down by this big offensive line. So now from the Iowa State 10, 17 to nothing, Florida State. The worst possible scenarios. The tailback, Greg Jones, doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage, loses a yard. This is the worst case, though, for Dan McCartney and his crew. It is, and that was a good play by Matt Ward, number seven, a guy out of Miami, hitting Greg Jones in the backfield. Dan McCartney, and he, he loves this guy, Matt Ward. Again, he's from Miami. He knows a lot of these guys on this Florida State team. Dan McCartney is a competitor. He is not going to allow this team to quit. And yes, Joel, it is the worst case scenario if Florida State can get in here. They're at the 11. Call it second and goal from there. Rex will take his time. Rutland in the back, a little bit of a flinch, but they didn't throw a flag on the slant. It's complete, taking it in Robert Morgan, close to the three. Just an excellent job by Chris Ricks. He felt the blitz coming on the outside. Pre-snap read, he didn't panic. 
he makes the adjustment and makes the throw for the first down. A dream first 15 minutes of play for Chris Ricks and the Seminoles of Florida State. Taking care of every opportunity, both offensively and defensively. The end of the first quarter, Seminoles by 17. To integrate. And Eddie Robinson and Jake Gaither, uh, Gaither I thought, played the biggest role in making it a smooth transition, you know? And that's why, that's why football is as good as it is today. So much respect for Eddie Robinson by coaches from all walks of life. They understand what he's meant to this game of football and the, the, the young man he's turned out with great character. First snap of the second quarter. Third and goal, Florida State already up by 17. Ricks, Bolden with a grab. Touchdown, Florida State. Pulled it off in front of Ellis Hobbs. But the throw and the angle taken by Bolden, absolutely perfect. It shows the athletic ability, once again, of Chris Ricks. He's a tall guy, but he's an athletic guy. And when he's got wide receivers, like a bold one in a Morgan out there to throw the ball to, anything can happen. This offense should be extremely explosive all year long. Bethia with the point after a flag of the play. He splits the uprights. Now let's remind our fans that Bolden came to Florida State already as a quarterback. Absolutely. And actually competed for the starting job at the early part of spring of 2001 before they made that move with him to wide receiver. The call against Iowa State. The referee from the Big Ten. Unsportsmanlike conduct on a defense. They use leveraging to try to block the PAT. The penalty is refused. Extra point is good. Jim Lapatina and all the rest of the crew from the Big Ten Conference. So Dan McCarney wants an explanation. One of his young men on that last flag. So now, Iowa State on the ropes early. Let's head down to the third member of our team, Eric Clemens. Eric? All right, guys, I guess the best word to describe by looking at the faces along the bench, not only among the players and coaches, but alumni and friends, is shock. I think Iowa State is absolutely shocked that they are not in this ball game right now, down 24 to nothing. And needless to say, and be cliche as if I might, they need a play. They need a play to get them back excited again and believing that they can go down and score and get back in this football game. And they got to make it happen fast, guys. Well, they need it. Besides an offensive play, they need a takeaway. They've got to have a big play from the defense as well. Or special teams. But the problem Iowa State had in preparation for Florida State, especially in an opener, you couldn't duplicate the speed in practice. Very you good cannot point. duplicate the speed of Florida State state with your scout team and I think they'll play better as this game goes on because this first quarter has been an adjustment telling in the speed factor Brett Cimarelli is going to kick it off a good move past the 20 Iowa State with a chance what a return by Lance Young the wide receiver that's exactly what they need already just mentioned special teams well now they've got great field position Lance Young, a junior from Beaumont High School in St. Louis with a big play. You've got a great lane coming up the field. Florida State came down and they sold out. They were trying to make a play, trying to get another big hit and make another play happen. But watch the young man come to the outside, stumbles a little bit, not by design, already a little jig jig there, gets up field. But the safety for Florida State number eight does a great job in forcing him to turn back, slow him down so the pursuit can catch up. So a 50-yard return out to the 45 of Florida State. Rutland with two to each side for Seneca Wallace. Iowa to Rutland, breaking tackles, close to a first down. He's shy by about a foot, just outside the 35. Now this is what they really wanted to do in this game, spread out Florida State's defense and run the zone play up inside. Rutland is six foot, 208 pounds, more of an inside runner than Wagner because he's got better vision because he's bigger. And how do you negate speed? You go directly at it. They tighten it up with two tight ends. Rutland up the cut. He'll take it the distance. Iowa State is on the board. 
that's exactly what they did, Artie. Right up the gut. You see, Florida State, they're going to come up to the line of scrimmage and try to make a play happen. They're guessing right now what they're going to do. But then Iowa State does a great job of blocking on the zone. You're coming right up the field here. Excellent cut back there. Caught the linebacker on the inside. And when that linebacker chose the wrong gap, Hiawatha knew he was in the end zone at the eight-yard line. No one was going to catch it. What a block by Bob Montgomery, the guard that pulled on the play. That quick Adam, inside trap. Yes, Adam Beneke with the point after. And Iowa State is down by 17. What a shot in the arm for this group. Let's see how long it lasts, though. Still the Seminoles by 17. Well, Hiawatha Rutland with a 36-yard touchdown run. He's out there on special teams duty. As Tom and Garner, Willie Reed go back. And let's see if the big play now can come from the defensive unit of Iowa State. Tony Elk, ready to kick it away. Over to the far side. It's going to be Gardner bringing it back. And belted early. Did it on his own to get it out past the 20. Good job. Close to the 22-yard line, back downstairs. Eric, what's the latest? All right, well, Iowa State, they have, of course, the seven straight years of 1,000-yard rushes, as you guys mentioned. But Michael Wagner and Hiawatha Rutland have more speed than their predecessors. And you saw it on the last touchdown, Rutland exploding up the middle. In fact, he says, guys, that lateral movement and all that juking is simply a waste of motion. He's a north-south kind of guy. Young man from... <laughs> Florida as well from Bradenton. So you know this game means a lot to him. They're in the eye. In the eye, Greg Jones. He'll get the call once again. Nothing available. A gain of about a yard, maybe two. It'll bring up second and eight. Joe, let's go back to that kickoff. We saw Rutland score the touchdown. Here he is coming down on special teams coverage, paying the price, giving up his body. Oh, for the team. That hurt my back. That oh. was a tackle, though. Now, yeah, it was yeah. kind of a takedown. Two points in Romo, Roman Greco, Greco wrestling. Yeah, whatever it's called, it was still a takedown. Jones stays in the eye. The top heavy on the right side. Wide side of the field. Now Rixie's going to change the play. And he's changing it because the secondary from Iowa State is moving around. Just got it off before the play clock expired. A dive, but an incompletion. Great attempt, though, by the wide receiver, P.K. Sam. Sophomore from Buford, Georgia. Part of the philosophy of the defense of Iowa State going into this game is to confuse Chris Ricks. So far, he's 7 for 10, but the secondary from Iowa State has got to move around like they did on that last play and put mental pressure on the sophomore. We haven't seen Florida State go deep yet. Now would be a great time to go play action and go on the top. Huge play for John Skladani, the defensive coordinator of Iowa State. Desperate for a stop on third and about seven. Ricks has time, though. And a receiver for a first down. It's past the 35, taken in by P.K. Sam. That's his first catch of the night, or check that. Instead, it's Talman Gardner, 21 not 81. Man, what a grab. But a good look again. And this young man, don't forget that Chris Ricks last year was eighth in the nation in passing efficiency. Well, it's a play-action pass. He fakes it up to number six, Jones. And Gardner runs a curl route behind the linebacker. And the ball is thrown right above his helmet. The perfect spot. It's almost impossible to defend that. Gardner pays the price, though, on the reception. It's all Big. about timing, Artie. All about timing. And that was timing. Huge conversion. Jones. Big hole into the secondary for another first down across the midfield strike. Power and speed for the young man that goes at 6'1", close to 250. Did you see the acceleration, Joe? Artie, I know you know you noticed it because you have the same type of acceleration. You take young a look. Man. Yeah, but he's, you know, we talked about it. He's bigger than that. He's about 245 now. He's a guy that can run up and down the field. But the trick on that last play, Kellen, was the unbalanced line by Florida State 
They did, Iowa State's defense did not adjust. Florida State goes all over the country and recruit how to get this young man out of South Carolina. Nine carries for 51 yards for Jones. Ricks on the play fake. And in trouble. Pretty good footwork. What a job by Chris Ricks. Turned a negative into a positive to the 44, a gain of about three. He doesn't look like a sophomore, gentlemen. Well, he looks like a guy, though, that's played in 12 games. This is his 14th or 13th game. Look at the mobility on him. He's got what I call subtle elusiveness. He can stop. He can slow himself down. He can accelerate. And like we talked subtle about. Subtle. Yes, write that down. He's a guy that's protecting himself. I'm write that down. And protecting the ball. I'm nice trying, I'm trying job, to educate Marty. I'm going to look I'm that one up. Make sure you, you spelled it correctly. <laughs> I think you pronounced it correctly. Good I job. Did. Good job. Second and seven on the toss sweep. It is Nick oh, Maddox look at that, look at that. breaking tackles. Maddox popped out of bounds with a flag on the play inside the 25 of the 24. And now, gentlemen, I can understand why they don't let you out of the studio all that often. You will be locked up and the key will be thrown away before it's all over. We're going to have, uh, it's going to be a hold. It's going to be a hold it's against Florida State. It's going to be a hold downfield against Florida State, exactly. But it's the one-two punch, though, Kellen. Sort of like you and me, a one-two punch, one punch of their running backs here. Did you see that explosion? He got into the hole before the defense of Iowa State could get there and close it down. And they were around the ball. He just flew right through the hole. On the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Trust me on this, though. The key to that play was the fact that it was an unbalanced line. Iowa State did not adjust. Florida State ran the ball back to the short side, and there was not enough defenders over there. On the quick snap. What do you mean, trust you? You still owe me twenty dollars. <laughs> I want my money. <laughs> I'll mediate later. Thank you. Thank you. So the markoff with 11:54 left in the first half. The Seminoles driving once again. Second and short. Second and a couple. Maddox stays in the backfield. The former high school player of the year in North Carolina. Rex. Give it to him. Should have dumped it off. He had him out there. You were talking about Nick Maddox wide open to the flat. He was wide open. Once Chris Ricks broke the pocket, Iowa State swarmed on him. And nobody, nobody stayed with Nick Maddox. They all came up field. You watch him on the outside here. Snap of the ball. Ricks drops it back. He's looking. It's not there to quick slant. He pulls it down quickly. And right over here, you're going to see the Iowa State players come in and defend. But sitting down here real nicely for him, Nick Maddox gives it to him, and he's gone down the sideline. Touchdown. Leon Washington join him in the backfield now. Florida State 3 or 4 in the third down tries. Rex, and it goes off the umpire. What a break for Iowa State. And the man was available. And which makes it an incomplete pass. But once again, he ought to start wearing a helmet. But once again, <laughs> there was some movement there by the secondary of Iowa State, which just caused a little bit of hesitation in Chris Ricks. Well, that time, the umpire, Rick Nelson, was not a traveling man. He was not. A Very good. Oh, Very good, oh, Joel. Oh. Sorry. Very good. Oh, boy, I tell you. People under 40, Joe, did not get that. <laughs> I almost missed it on 44. Todd Miller waiting for the punt. And the first punt of the game, no less, comes from Chance Gwaltney of the Seminoles. A good one now. Can they get to it inside the five? No. So Iowa State, let's hear it. They hold. Cyclones get it back. Down by 17. For the Seminoles. The delay didn't fool anybody. Hiawatha Rutland buried in the backfield and downstairs we go. Eric Clemens. All right, Joe, back on the Florida State side of the field now. But what a difference in the Iowa State sideline. Just left those guys. The big plays on special teams and by Hiawatha Rutland have gotten them back in the game. Now they need to sustain something. And guys, I mean, can you have two worst turnovers? One results in a direct touchdown and the other an indirect touchdown on a fumbled kickoff. If not for that, well, what if for Iowa State? But they got to sustain something now. It is imperative they do something offensively because of the field position they're in now after the loss. It's a loss of seven. All the way back to their 13. 
Seneca Wallace. And he finds that little crease. Jack Whitford, the junior from Grinnell, Iowa. Excellent job by Wallace that time of maintaining his composure and being calm in the pocket. He finds the throwing lane and just drills the ball to Whitford. A little curl route, unless you break in front of that perfectly, you're not going to stop it. A little bit of a zone coverage by Florida State. They found the seam on that play. Florida State. Trying to stop on third and four, and Seneca Wallace rushed the situation. He was trying to get it out to Lane Danielson. Play never developed. And you're starting to see some movement now in the front of Florida State. Big number 42, Jarrell Hudson, is moving in and out of the line of scrimmage. Again, trying to create some confusion in the mind of Seneca Wallace and the offensive lineman. This is what Iowa State could not have, Artie. Three and out, a loss on the first down, no movement on second and third down. It's putting the ball back to a Florida State offense that's finding his rhythm. They better gear up here and not get it blocked because you know Florida State's coming. The out third in the Big 12, 16th in the nation, 44-yard average. They were after it. Now, Dominique Robinson bringing it back, getting blocks, and finally belt it. He was buried at the 31-yard line. Some kind of coverage by Iowa State. Schmitz downfield. And he was the one doing the pounding that time. Willie Reed's first carry, the redshirt freshman. Kathleen, Georgia. Great ball game we've got going on here. I'm looking forward next week to seeing Ontario Smith. who transferred from Tennessee, came to Oregon. Artie, just an outstanding talent. I mean, the, the nation has to see yeah. this young man run the football. And he's fast. He reminds me of some of these guys from Florida State. As you see Chris Ricks getting the signal from the sideline from offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden. Coaches at Tennessee still miss that young man. I would, too. Game of just about five for the redshirt freshman Willie Reed. Oh, oh. Tight formation for Florida State. Reed again. And maybe a half a yard at the most for Georgia's Offensive High School Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Bulldog down by Chris Whitaker. Chris Whitaker is an interesting story. Number 47 Tell from us, Iowa Arnie. State. Tell us Here, a story. Here's a guy who started as a freshman two years ago, played in the first game last year, got hurt, was out for the year, was not a starter this year, but he ended up being elected captain. East St. Louis, Illinois. My hometown. Well, Jones got it going early, but you couldn't tell by those staples total yardage numbers. Most of it through the air for Florida State. Now they need five more. Ricks out of the gun. Pocket holds up well. Too tall, but what a great grab. Coming down with it, Robert Morgan, the senior from Atlanta, after missing all of last year. Here's a guy who caught 19, don't forget, for the national championship team in 99. Take a look at this replay. Terrible throw by Chris Ricks, the quarterback. He drops down as a point of release. It's low, the ball sails. But again, a receiver. Bails out a quarterback. It's always a receiver already. Bails out the quarterback. Six feet tall. He must have a 38, 39 yeah. inch vertical to go up and get that ball. You know, he does, but that was not a terrible throw. And the wide receivers throw, from Florida State have an advantage over the Iowa State defensive backs. They're bigger than the smaller five Iowa inches, State. Five inches, seven inches, five inches. Breaking tackles out of the backfield. Reed gets a first down and gains 11 yards. Well, if it's a jump ball, after you saw those numbers, if it's a jump ball, it's no contest. But that's, you know, the offensive line, though, of Florida State, there's their weight advantage and the height advantage of the receivers, to me, are the two biggest assets, besides the speed and skill, that Florida State's got on this offensive football team against the Cyclone defense. Well, that's four big points right there yeah, on his size, speed, height, weight. Yeah. That's called recruiting. Is that all? <laughs> That's all they had. <laughs> See, I'm an analyst. 17-point <laughs> lead for Florida State more than halfway through the second quarter. From the 39, first down. And he had a single on the outside, P.K. Sam, as they gambled a little bit up front. Sam isolated against the defensive back. Atif Austin with a good cushion. Flag is down, though. Down back by the quarterback. 
Getting up very slowly was Jordan Karstens, the junior from Bagley, Iowa, for Iowa State. Illegal block. Shot block by the offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. The key first down. So they set him up and they chopped him down. And that is the fourth penalty of the night on the Seminoles of Florida State. Coming into this ball game, that's one thing that Florida State wanted to concentrate on. They wanted to cut down the number of turnovers from last season, which hurt them in their 8-4 uh, season. And also, they wanted to cut down on their penalties. Make it 5 for 52. And that's the only drawback tonight by Florida State is the 5 penalties. So now first and long. Back of the road territory. Reed. And coming up on the support out of the secondary. A nice rope and an ankle tackle by free safety Mark Timmons. And the free safety, which is Timmons, became part of an eight-man front. Obviously, John Skuldaney, the defensive coordinator, thought it was going to be a run. He needed to get an extra guy on the line of scrimmage. It was the perfect call for number 18 to get up close to the line of scrimmage. Now they've taken out the fullback and the tight end. Let's look for some type of blitz from Iowa State. The Florida State needs to go deep on this play right here. Second and 22 outside of their own 48. No tight end to the set. Ready Reed on the slight delay. Good yardage. Battling to the 40. But he can't hold through. We'll leave the redshirt freshman, Tim Tabrink, in on the stop, a sophomore from Alton, Iowa. And Iowa State that time played a 4 3, cover two, very conservative. They didn't want to blitz Kellen because they didn't want to give up the big play. I don't think they think they can cover these guys. I look for them to play zone again here. But they're going to play zone, not try to keep the receivers in front of them, but at least once or twice a half, you got to go deep, Barty, and get them even back on their heels even more so. It's a third and 11. It'll be a second consecutive punt for Florida State. Straight four man rush on Ricks. And they finally get to him. They battle. And Bo Coleman caught up with him from behind. They changed it up. They went to a three deep zone. I tell you, when you play this game, you got to bring all your equipment. There's a tackle 77. He's sitting there, his mouthpiece hanging out, dangling. You know, you, people say, well, what does a mouthpiece do for you? It keeps you from getting a concussion if you get hit in the head is what it does. Waltney punts. Iowa State staying away from it. Had a good job by Waltney. It's going to be out of bounds. As we come back, the Cyclones will have it. First and 10 at their own seven. Florida State dominating, though, in the first half. some type. I'm not sure if he had that ice on his hand. I think he had it on his hand. From the seven. Nothing available on the first down carry. That was Michael Wagner for Iowa State. And our Dr. Pepper trivia this evening. Bobby Bowden second all time with 18 bowl wins as a head coach. Well, who is number one? Who's on top of the list? Can, can I answer this? Do I get a case of Dr. Pepper? Or... I know this. I do, too. I got it wrong in the, in the rehearsals. But uh, <laughs> You missed it in rehearsal? Yeah, I missed it in rehearsal. <laughs> but I got it right now. Second and 12. That's way more information than we asked for. <laughs> Moving the pocket. Seneca Wallace has had success doing this in the past. Lane Danielson over his fingertips. What a bullet, though. And Seneca Wallace thinks of himself as... Steve Brickey, the offensive coordinator, told us, thinks of himself as a passer first and not a runner. Oh, he is, and he's an athlete that can throw going left or going right. He is a man that throws with tremendous accuracy, as you're going to see this ball, just a little bit overthrown, but it's a nice pass. He, though, when he gets into the open, scrambling, turns into a running back. He needs to pull that ball down and just do a naked bootleg and run up the field to put pressure on Florida State so they wonder if he's going to run think, I, I think they're afraid of the speed of the defense. I really do. He's 5 of 10 so far, 55 yards. He's had one picked off, taken back for his score, and now he's going to be locked in. The speed of the defense. 
Jordan Allen, Augustin, the junior from Miami, tracks him down. It'll be a punting situation. Iowa State's own end zone. You see if Florida State uses that great speed on special teams and tries to even close the door on Iowa State more before the half by coming after this punt. I think they will, Artie. They have it. They, they might, but even if they don't kill them, they're going to end up in wonderful field position because they should end up with the ball on the Iowa State side of the 50. Now, you see them start to tighten down a little bit there. Iowa State is nervous and concerned the Knowles are going to come after them. One step, kid off. He's going to catch it, one step, and kick it. Flags on the punt play. Now you see that would have been an excellent kick to return because it was a low kick there was no hang time and the return man could have caught it on the run I'll start offense at the distance of the goal line go for it down now to me if you're a special teams coach you fake like you're going to punt block and you set up an excellent return here because again you're going to get the ball in wonderful field position all right, Coach Artie, let's see what happens here. They'll punt it again. Nick Maddox waiting for it just outside. As Yelp booms it away, it'll be the 42 for Maddox. And close to the 35, they'll drive it back near the 37. Maddox committed the Cardinal sin on return, men. He started up, he picked a slot, he changed his mind halfway through the action. You can't do that. Once you make a decision, you got to sell out. Well, we just saw our Dr. Pepper trivia. And his coach obviously agreeing with you. Oh, yes. Exactly <laughs> what he was telling him in words that, you know, I can use on the air, but we can't repeat what he was saying to that player. Right. Bobby Bowden, second all-time, 18 bowl victories. Joe Paterno. Number one with 20. No surprise there. Greg Jones in the eye. PJ sell video for the fullback. And Rex timing it perfectly. PK Sam. Well, Bobby Bowden, so much speculation about a potential national championship. It was the Sugar Bowl. January of 2000, the 1999 regular season, the 2000 National Championship for the Seminoles of Florida State, dominating Virginia Tech. And after wide right earlier in his Florida State career, it was nice to see for Bobby Bowden. I covered that game. We'll talk about that after this play here. Jones scrambling his way for close to three. Now near the 16-yard line. Of course, the quarterback for Virginia Tech is the great Michael Vick, now with the Atlanta Falcons. But Bobby Bowden, after the game, he told me, he said, you know, Kellen, I knew this kid Vic was good. I didn't realize how good he was until we got on the field with him. And if we were not as deep as we were on defense, he would have beat us. Because they ran Michael Vick down after four, three quarters of football. He was just spent. Florida State with exceptional balance so far. On the ground, Greg Jones. The arm tackles, close to first down. He's short by about a yard before that snap, though. 133 yards passing for Florida State. 127 on the ground. They get a few more here. They're really utilizing this unbalanced line I was talking about, where Brett Williams, number 72, is on the short side, and they're out manning the Iowa State defense at the point of attack. Iowa State has got to do a better job. They better make it at the halftime of adjusting to the unbalanced. What's that adjustment? Are you a defensive coach? You got to move over adjustment? with them. You got to move over with them. Jones plowing his way to a first down and a touchdown. What a run once again by Greg Jones breaking tackles. Another six for the seven holes. Greg Jones hard running to the inside. We'll take a look here after the extra point on the replay. See just how great of a run that really was. It's called violent running. When you violent run. Violent running when you're not. Is knock, that another Artie yeah, Gigantino term? Yes, it is. When you knock defenders away from you and they can't knock you down. Bethia with the point after. And the assault continues for Florida State. 
here's Matt Ward, the senior linebacker from Miami, steps up into the hole, picks the wrong hole as Matt Words goes to his right. And of course, the running back Jones goes to his left, makes a great cut, catches him off balance as the safety comes up. Jermaine Billups and tries to make a head down tackle, doesn't wrap him up. And young man, you can't tackle that way. And I know, I know Dan McCartney and his staff didn't teach you to tackle that way. Well, our Toyota scoring recap didn't take long, less than two minutes, covering 37 yards after they stopped him on a three and out with a punt. Iowa State with the ball back at their own seven. So Florida State capitalizing on the great field position. And fortunately for all of us, no longer in the BCS equation is margin of victory. Absolutely. That was a <laughs> thing we've been suggesting on our pregame show for the last two years that they did do away with that. I think there's some common sense now into the BCS. And you talk about the BCS, it's been there, the championship game, for four years. And the Seminoles from Florida State, Kellen, have been there three times. That's quite an accomplishment. That's a great accomplishment. And they want to get back this year. And it looks like they've got the team they to got make a legitimate run for it. On the run, Michael Wagner out of bounds across the 25, near his own 30. A nightmare of a beginning for Iowa State. No one could have anticipated this. They are a year, very young squad, though. And Wallace, a nifty footwork. That's what we've been talking about. Now he'll save a timeout, but he doesn't get much yardage. Wallace on the scramble. There's only for the eight cyclone. out of the first 48 on the depth chart. And they're too deep for Iowa State. That are seniors so they have so many players that are starting as sophomores and juniors quite a few but if, if, if for the football fans out there i want you to truly understand where iowa state started eight years ago when dan mccartney came in and took over this program of the 85 90 guys they had on scholarship that year i would say about 20 to 25 were legitimate d1 uh, student athletes he's really upgraded this program upgraded the facilities and got them back into the top 25. Now third, close to eight. Good throw. Great grab, and a first down to Lance Young. This is what Seneca Wallace does. He'll hurt you with his feet, he'll move around in the pocket, allow his receivers to find some space down the field. He seems like he wasn't as mobile at the first half of this game, or the first quarter and a half of this game, but now he's getting back to his normal self. Plenty of pocket protection lane. Danielson hangs on at the 39. He's short of the first down. A timeout is going to be called. And to further illustrate what you were just talking about, this program in the 90s, only two teams in Division 1A, 115 teams, only two had fewer wins than Iowa State, Kent State, and Temple. So they truly have come a long way over the last three, four years. Well, Dan McCartney, very strong. On the Rookie of the Year, the Newcomer of the Year. In the Big 12, last season, Seneca Wallace. He has tremendous competitiveness. He elevates the player of all the players around him. He's got a great arm. He's accurate. And a lot of times when somebody has the magic feet and the sweet feet and they can run and, and run away from you, uh, they don't have a, a great reputation of being a good thrower, but he does. He can beat you with his arm and his feet. Uh, and when he pulls it down and runs with it, I think he's one of the better running backs in the Big 12. And the guy who should get a pat on the back, though, is Dan McCartney and the administration of Iowa State for sticking with him through some tough times in the late 90s there. And now they're seeing the fruits of his hard work. He's got an excellent staff. They're very well coached. Now, Seneca Wallace, I believe, is a middle round, so to speak, Heisman candidate. Obviously, the better he plays and the better Iowa State plays, the more he'll be elevated to the nation but right now he's probably on that secondary list but he does have the talent he does have the skills and he will get the exposure to move up into the Rex Grossman Ken Dorsey list especially playing in the Big 12 conference Absolutely. they've got Nebraska Texas Tech they've got Texas Oklahoma Colorado so a lot of the nation will see Seneca Wallace second and a couple as they just used their first time out 27 seconds left in the half anything at the end of the half they need it and they've got a first down. That'll stop the clock once again. That's a rip around the collar. As Lane Danielson took a tumble. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator at that time, elected to go with only a three-man rush and cover eight. When you rush only three guys, you're going to allow the quarterback a lot of time to throw. He's got three men down again, but he's going to bring two linebackers. Wide open, the tight end 
believe it or not, will they get there? Yes! Touchdown! Do you believe it? Kyle Knock with the score. When they, you're down never and looked, out, they never look for the tight end. When you're down and out and you need a touchdown, always go to the best athlete on the field, the tight end, yeah, Artie. Yeah. The tight end I is always doing. open. The senior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, just came up with his first career score. And that's the only the second touchdown in the last three years by an Iowa State tight end. And if you're prepping for Iowa State, if you're Florida State, what you said is right, Kellen. You forget about the tight end because it's not a big factor in the passing game. How big was that with nine seconds left in the half? And all of a sudden, it's a 17-point deficit. Let's take a look here from our top camera as Florida State does not get set. Here they are. They're just in disarray right here. Seneca Wallace comes up, gets his people down, snaps the ball. The blitz comes late. Seneca Wallace finds a tight end. Good coaching by Florida, excuse me, Iowa State to get them set. Seneca Wallace, he knew exactly where he wanted to go with that ball, where he needed to go. The moment the ball was snapped, when he saw the blitz come from his left side, yeah. he looked to the right side to that always dependable tight end. Yeah, you know what? It was a zone blitz, and they hit the open spot. But, hey, they needed that. This Iowa State football team needs to feel good about themselves, Joel, when they go into the locker room. And let's go back on the other side, Artie, for Florida State. If you're going to make a legitimate run of the national championship, they got a little lax of days ago with nine seconds left to go on the clock. They were probably thinking the half was over, so they didn't kind of hurry up. They didn't think Iowa State could score them. They can't afford to do that against opponents that they're going to play the ACC, especially when they play Florida the last game of the season, and they play Miami in October. Well, this guy right here, Bobby Bowden, is going to let them know about that at halftime. But, you know, hey, Iowa State is a good football team coming into this game, and they're being very competitive with Florida State. Willie Reed back deep. Redshirt freshman running back, along with the senior wide receiver, Talman Gardner. And Tony Elk want to make sure neither one touches it. Nine seconds left in the half. It'll be Gardner staying in the end zone. For the clock did not start. Florida State, you'd have to think, will take a knee, head to the locker room, up by 17. But as Artie just mentioned, any kind of pick-me-up from a psychological standpoint was a must for Dan McCartney's group. Now the believability. Hey, we've been down by 17 before. We can get back in it. We can get back in this ball game. And Florida State right now, they're on the sideline talking about, okay, we take the nine seconds, we take the knee, we go in. Or do we take a shot downfield? It's a free play. They intercept it there on the 40-yard line on the other side, maybe the 30-yard line. But at some point in time in this ball game, they've got to get that ball deep down the field to loosen up Iowa State. And that's something they said they wanted to do, but haven't been able to do it so far. And it looks like they're going to take a knee or run the ball up inside because they got two tight ends in the game. That will be the case. Hammer into the head. Terrence Washington, the fullback. And that's the final snap of a wild first 30 minutes of play. Florida State. Well, there's no question they dominated with 277 yards of total offense. But all of a sudden, that 70-yard drive, reason for hope as we head downstairs to Eric Clemens. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Coach Bobby Bowden, you talked about all week how anxious you and your guys were to get out here on the field. You got out to a great start. I know you don't like the way it ended. Your assessment of the first half. No, I do not like the way it ended. We had great momentum. We had the ball game in good shape with great momentum. And they score and get it back. And we score again. They come back. No, I don't like that part, but they are a fighting football team, and uh, what I hope is our kids don't let up. Louisiana Tech. Wide receiver Troy Edwards establishes an NCAA receiving record. 405 yards in the game. But the fourth-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers and their new head coach, Frank Stolen, took control of the clock. The field as well defeated the high-powered offense of Louisiana Tech 56 to 27. The 1998 Eddie Robinson Classic. And welcome back to the fifth annual. We're at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Joel Myers, Kevin Winslow, Artie Gigantino, Eric Clemens, and a muggy night now. Can Iowa State get back in it? 
I think they can, and the reason I can, I do believe they can, is because of this man right here. This is a determined coach. He was an offensive lineman at the University of Wisconsin. He's been knocked around in his life. He is a determined man. He's going to get this team going again. Wagner, Lance Young waiting for the kickoff. It's going to be Young. He had a great return before, 50 yards, same side, looking for a crease, and he won't find it. Well, the indecision cost him. Kept the wheels spinning, but wasn't headed in the right direction. It, it always does. When you come down that field, you've got to pick a lane. Either you hit the return mark or you pick one of your own, but you cannot hesitate, especially against a team like Florida State with all this speed. They're closing you like a bad dream. You know what? It's called north and south, guys. You don't want to run east and west. You want to run north and south when you're returning kickoffs. But what if the stadium is facing east it and west? It doesn't matter. It's still go north you and south. You still go north yes. and south. Yeah. Okay, all right. That was funny. <laughs> Seneca Wallace, 9 of 15 with one picked off return for a score. He had 123 yards passing in the first half. Hiawatha Rutland, who came into the third series. Got a touchdown run of 10 yards with the first try of the second half. And like a pinball, oh, it takes it down. almost five up to the 20. Banged down by Claudius Ose, the rubber back. When you see Florida State has a linebacker walked up into the line of scrimmage, the offense from Iowa State will audible to an inside run in an attempt to hit a seam. Little hurry up, no huddle action. First time we've seen it, Wallace puts it up to grabs. Man. What a knockaway by Rufus Brown. He went for Lane Danielson, and they're very fortunate throwing it into that double coverage. It wasn't picked off. Yeah, the two defensive backs kind of knocked each other off the ball, but they had a better shot at the football than the receiver did, Danielson. Rufus Brown made a nice break on the ball, the junior out of El Paso. 5'9", 185, but extremely fast, extremely athletic, and can get up in the air and take the ball out of the, out of the air. They tried to go no huddle, Artie, and catch Florida State off guard like they did just before the half with that touchdown. Key third and five early at the outset of the second half. Flag down to the play. Matt Wallace overshoots his man, looking for Montgomery. Rufus Brown, a former option quarterback you were just talking about, former option quarterback in high school in El Paso. Looked like he had it. Well, Rufus Brown was surprised that the ball got to him, and he was only able to get one hand up. Let's see what the call is. Illegal formation on the offense. They only had six men on the line of scrimmage at the snap. Penalty refused. Fourth down. Well, Iowa State all pumped up. Coming out of the locker room, has it for only 45 seconds and three snaps before they give it away. That really hurts. So you game plan and you scheme and everything else in the locker room and get them fired up and then give it right away. Probably good field position for Florida State. It's not the way to get back into this ball game by going one, two, and three and out. Yelk will punt to P.K. Sam. What a beauty. Open field tackle, and what a job by Lane Danielson on special teams to get Sam at the 30. So the starting wide receiver, and we see more and more in college football, starters on special teams. Danielson does a great job of coming downfield, but Sam really, really helps him out. He's trying to get back to a wall instead of coming outside and realizing that he doesn't have a play. Luckily, he doesn't get his foot caught up under there for an injury. But Sam was trying to get back to a design play. Danielson didn't let him do that. He should have come to the outside and taken what he could get. Yeah, that was just good coverage though by Iowa State. He's doing a great job of covering kicks, especially punts. But he has so much room to the outside, already. got to go with the flow. Ball was in the air too long. Junior from Beaufort, South Carolina, Greg Jones gets the call. Cracked after he gets five. The tackler took him for two more. That's Brandon Brown, the weak side linebacker, a sophomore from Houston's Westfield High School. It, al it almost seems like, Joel, both teams are trying to feel each other out a little bit here at the beginning of the second half. Not try to make a big mistake, obviously not going for a big play, but just get back into the rhythm and the flow of the game. Well, they pound Jones. And when I say pound, he goes at about 250. The 
Top heavy on the right side. He tried to crack it back the other way. Didn't work for the weak side. No gain of the carry. What great gang tackling. But the tailbacks of Florida State, not a bad combination. Maddox and Jones. Maddox, a smaller of the two, showing a lot of quickness and elusiveness, the ability to cut back. Gets to the outside, gets the ball in the end zone, while Greg Jones, more of a straight-ahead runner. Good speed, good vision to the outside. The ability, once he sees the hole, to accelerate, keep good balance, and get him to the end zone. Just kind of sniffs it out. They even got the redshirt freshman Willie Reed in there at the end of the first half, and he had peeled off a couple of nice ones. Big third down defensively for Iowa State, down by 17. Jones, will he get to the marker? Yes, he will. He knew what he had to do. Boy, did he know the line of scrimmage that he had to get to? The first down, the 40, he got there. One of the benefits of having great wide receivers is the secondary plays a little bit looser. You play off a little bit, which opens up the underneath passing game. And I think Florida State tonight is doing an excellent job of getting the ball to the backs out in the flat as a secondary from Iowa State worries about those wide receivers. Give uh, Ricks the credit because he made the decision quickly. Not a great throw to the back in the flat. Could have led him a little bit more, but he got it to him quickly so he can pick up the first down. Ricks 10 of 14, 133 yards passing. From the 42, another first down for the Seminoles. The deep ball. Gardner's there. Banged away from Talman Gardner by the combo of Atif Austin and Mark Timmons. And it looked like he was going to come down with it. Gart Gardner is unbelievable. He runs a 4-3. He's the leading receiver from a year ago coming back into this lineup. You watch Rex as he drops back in the pocket. He's got that right knee a little bit bandaged, but he steps into the pocket. You see how far he dropped that arm? He's got to get that arm up higher, get that ball on top. If he does that, it's a better line of flight to the receiver. He has an easier chance of catching it. He's got a Tennessee Joe to drop that ball and then try to get it up, and it doesn't come off smoothly all the time. But that was a good throw. That was not a good throw. It was, it was catchable. He did not have nah, pressure. Nah, he had out. time to make a throw. Illegal substitution on the offense. Dead ball foul. My apologies to the Still officials for talking while he was making a call, but this man to my right here was interrupting <laughs> me, Artie. That was a terrible throw, Artie. He did not have any pressure. He could have stepped up and made a much better throw. Mm. If he doesn't drop that ball, that little hitch-type move, he can't do that. Catchable. It's a catchable ball. Second and 15. I feel like Mills Lane in here. <laughs> Jones and Maddox well, will on. stay in the backfield. I'm going to go back and take another look at his motion. You know, two backs in the backfield this time, trying to maximize the protection. The tight end from Florida State, not in the game. Three wide receivers, two backs in the backfield. Take a look at that motion after this play, Artie. Second and long. Little circle pattern through Jones. They pin him to the boundary. So they chip away, get about seven, eight yards out of the play, Make but my back, to the, back to the form of Ricks. Right here, watch this arm as it drops down. The ball is up right now in good position. Watch him drop it down. Stop it right there. You don't have to drop the ball right there to make a throw. A good release is you keep it high, you throw it. That little motion right there is the reason why that ball is not complete. Let me give you a little advice. Don't coach a great thrower. Let him throw the ball naturally. Somebody will make that adjustment along the way. You coach him too much. I think you adjust them too much. It's not the same. Third and eight. Ricks in trouble. Will he get there? No. A stop for Iowa State. And Ricks really upset like they did something into the backfield to get to him. Free safety blitz that time. Mark Timmons, number 18, just missed Ricks in the backfield. When you're coming hard as a blitzer, the hardest thing sometimes is to sack a stationary quarterback because you're going so fast and he just sidesteps you. Dan McCartney has got his defense playing fired up right now. Ricks was complaining he thought that his face mask had been grabbed on that play. That was his complaint. They almost get to the punt by Gwaltney. Todd Miller is going to stay away from it. And it takes a great Florida State hop. He didn't get up there and call for the fair catch. And a disappointing exchange for Iowa State. When they have it, they're going to be back at their own five-yard line.
10 pounds. Some guys run low. He runs straight up and down. Because he's physical and he's got confidence in himself that he can run through the tackle of a would-be safety coming up. That time, Claudius Osei, the safety from Florida State, was the eighth man in the box, made the tackle in the hole. Three yards on the first down carry. Iowa State just desperate for a first down due to the field position. Four minutes gone in the second half. We knew we'd hear it before too long. Now you're not in the lag. Where's the center for Wallace Tripp? Like he came back and caught the foot of one of his linemen. That's exactly what it looked like. And, you know, those things happen in games. Big bad break for what, Iowa what, State. Watch what happens here. You see the guy coming across in motion here is the tight end. But as he steps back, the left guard, big number 69, Dwayne Johnson, kind of bangs into him. And he almost handed the ball off. He started to hand the ball off, and that was a bad choice. When you go down, you keep the ball, you secure the ball. So from bad to worse for Iowa State. Now third, a little more than 11. Waddles out of his own end zone. And he's got Danielson. What a grab at the 35. First down of the 40. B.J. Ward. Claudius Ose converging over the shoulder lane. Danielson. Danielson does a great job at the line of scrimmage of escaping the defensive back. He gets to the inside. See him hold the seam. He held that route up the middle. The defensive back never looked back when he saw the receiver react to the ball. But he did a great job of keeping it up the seam, giving the quarterback the proper angle to make a throw. Now movement of the offensive line. Another dead ball foul, most likely coming up against the offensive line on the left side. In fact, fired early. The tackle, Casey Shelton. You know, both teams, I think, if they if they they should throw the football Fire down the field like that well, a little bit more. I've heard Offense. that somewhere. Five yard penalty. Have you heard that, Joe? First down. Never. Never. <laughs> That's new, Artie. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's insightful. Bo both teams wanted Just to do that coming the into field. the game, and well, they never did in the middle of the field. I do like the use of the seams. We have not. We've seen That's the boundaries more That's than yeah. the seams. About. You got to get the ball up the field. Take a shot down the middle. Seneca Wallace did a great job of throwing that ball on time and not allowing the free safety chance to how drift was it, How was his form when he threw it, Kellen? It was good form. He okay. kept the ball up high. Thank you. First and 15 of the mark off of five. I'm catching some friendly fire up here. Nice maneuver. High walk of Rutland spinning. And gets the five back. You, you get touchy after a while, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up offense for Seneca Wallace. Will it work this time on the flare in the flat. High walk of Rutland. Can't make the first guy miss. What a nice open field tackle by Michael Bulware, the younger brother of the Ravens, Peter Bulware, a junior from Columbia, South Carolina. And there's the guy that's responsible for this Florida State defense, Mickey Andrews. He's in his 19th year as a defensive coordinator. Now he's the associate head coach, one of the truly great defensive coaches in the entire United States. It's a shame he doesn't look fired up at all. No, he is a fired <laughs> up guy. He's not into this game at all. Third and about eight. First down, the grab, and I believe he got it up. The surge takes him for the first down. What a move at the end of the play by Jamal Montgomery. And he was aware of the marker on the field. This is a good job now of mixing up plays by the Iowa State offense. You're going to see a Montgomery come down the field, fights to get free, comes back to the inside, and makes the catch. A highly recruited receiver from Long Beach, California, now doing well for the Cyclones. Cyclones get in the end zone. It could be a very interesting second half. Out of the gun, Seneca Wallace. Has a man with a big cushion on the near side, Jack Whitford. That's a long throw across the field. It's a long throw across the field. Seneca Wallace is just, he's got good form. Got, we've got a flag down on the field. Let's take a look here at Seneca Wallace. We showed earlier a Ricks run the ball. Now, why Seneca keeps the ball up, keeps the ball up, makes the throw, drops it just a tab, but he comes already right back over the top, delivers the ball, follows through with his shoulder and his arm motion, brings that leg through, puts the ball right on the money. That's why he's so accurate. The illegal formation. The penalty. First on down. Iowa State, it is their third, only their third of the contest. Joel, good, to, good to know our friends are watching. 
Down at Comcast Cable, Tallahassee, and also Fox Sports Net Florida. Excuse me, Joel, but when you substitute so much and you have so many multiple formations, sometimes, Kellen, you have a problem getting lined up. And that's what's happened a little bit for both teams tonight. That's why there's been so many illegal formations. On that same play, that last play, already Florida State ran a guy in late who was a no factor in the play because he just came on the field a little bit too late. Fake the reverse with Danielson, Hiawatha, and Rutland, maybe two at the most. So much slower start to the second half, at least offensively, than we saw for the first half. Both teams have had it and punted. Now the second possession of the second half for Iowa State, a second and long. Lifted up on the left side, maybe the guard, Dwayne Johnson. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense. Five-yard penalty, go second down. That is simply a reaction to the speed of Florida State. You know, they play too deep. They rotate linemen in and out, linebackers. They just keep coming at you. Iowa State is not that deep at the offensive line, although they do have some experience, and it takes a toll. You know, you got to get off that ball and get set. They just keep bringing in fresh legs and keep running them at them. Now it takes away options for Iowa State. The Markoffs is now at second. At 18. Three wide receivers for Seneca Wallace. Good idea. He's got great feet. Hasn't used it yet. And now does for big yardage. Gets 16. Shy of the first down by two. Augustin made the stop. This whole thing starts with a left-handed snap from center by center Zach Butler. Seneca sees it. Butler's doing a great job of blocking, getting out. The hole opens up inside. Florida State is dropping off into deep zone. Seneca takes off. This is the threat Florida State was nervous about. You're seeing Seneca Walls right now at his very best. It's over the third time he's tried to carry it tonight. Critical third and deuce. Kyle out the run, lunges and gets it down to the 38. Took a long time, that zigzag, but it worked. You know, we made the comment about the left-handed snap and shotgun by Zach Butler, but when he's in, when he's in a stance here, and the quarterback's up underneath him, he does it with his right hand. This guy does it both ways. Right hand when the quarterback's up underneath him, left hand when it's in a shotgun. He's a versatile center. <laughs> Well, he is the emotional pulse of yeah, the yeah, team, is. as their coaches told us. And a good guy. <laughs> Banging his way, Rutland into the secondary, close to another first down. And all of a sudden, even though it's a 17-point lead for Florida State, there's a shift in the momentum. You take a look at Rutland. He's a back that seems to get stronger as the game goes on. Just three carries in the first half for 38 yards, 36 for the touchdown. Makes a great cut to get back to the inside. Once he was cut off from the outside and has good balance to get that ball upfield. Does a good job, Joe Lenardi, protecting that football. Tucks it in real nice and tight. Gets a break as Michael Wagner takes over. The full of a back, almost 250 pounds. They need less than two. Wagner won't get it. Tripped up. He was torpedoed in the backfield. It'll be third in the yard. Knifing through Robert May, the senior from Waukegan, Illinois. Both offenses have seemed to be a little bit more conservative here in the second half. And what Dan McCartney and his offensive coaches want to do is try to wear down this Florida State defense a little bit and give his defense some rest so they can run around when their time comes to come back on the field. Rutland's back in there. Third down, Rutland makes a miss, but I don't know if he got the marker. Did he get to the first down? He may be just inches shy. It will be, Joel, and I'm never wrong on these things. It's about never. three. Never? No, seriously, it's about a half a foot short. Three centimeters? Whatever, I mean, half a foot. It's just short, whatever it is, it's short. It's short. Okay, if you're Dan McCartney now, Callan, what do you do? I'm going to go for the field goal. Well, he doesn't have a long kicker. Yelk has been blocked. The other young man, Benneke, told us maybe 40-42 is his distance. I say you go for it, and I think that's what he'll do. And do they have the first down? 
Artie, I think you might be wrong here. No, Kellen, I think I'm right. Look at that, Kellen, right there. Three centimeters. I'm exactly right. <laughs> Reason. <laughs> I apologize, Thank Artie. you very much. I don't much. do this often. I must come out of the studio and, and apologize because I will and, never and apologize in the studio. I, I don't want to brag here, but I'm on a roll. We're going to go for it. Can I get a replay of the booth? <laughs> <laughs> I want to live this moment again. I want our fans to, I mean, they could just see Artie in the booth. What's that, a, a link and a half? That's a link and a half short. He's going to go for it. Does he go play action, go over the top? No, nah, he goes right at him. Goes I'd, right have, at him. I'd have the quarterback take it. <laughs> I tell you what, I applaud what he's doing here. I applaud what Iowa State's doing. This is an opportunity to show the nation where you're at as a football program. In other words, I approve of it, Kellen. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure if you were on the fence or not, if you wanted to go for it or just want to go it. Play of the game so far. It's Seneca Wallace. He should have it. Of course, it's going to depend upon the spot, but it looks like the linesman on the far side gives it to him inside the 28. Joel if it's inside the 28, he's got it. Joel, it's first down. After the last call, I believe. I believe you already. He got the first down. He slipped off the tackle. Oh, we're going to have a measurement. Well, he didn't get... The, Hold on. Well, Hold you on. know what? The linesman came in inside the 28, but the ball is spotted outside the 28. McCartney's got a legitimate right. Hold your tickets, ladies and gentlemen. It's a photo finish. We have a photo finish. He's got it. Knows who the football drive is alive. It's six minutes long and counting. And Iowa State desperate for a touchdown to make it a 10-point ball game. Take a look at Mickey Andrews there, the defensive coordinator. Doesn't like it. Had a great defense in the year 2000. They slipped by Florida State standards a year ago. This is a rebound year for this Florida State defense also. So many young players last year. Right? Absolutely. Seneca Wallace out of the gun. Spreads the defense. Throwing the shortstop. And the reception is good on the far side to Jack Whitford. He gets a little more than nine, make it more than eight on that. You know, years ago, Iowa State wouldn't be in a position to even take this game. Let's face it, after what happened in the 90s, so it's been dramatic over the last three, four years what McCartney has done. For them to have a quarterback like Seneca Wallace out of Sacramento, who originally signed with Oregon, I do believe. Oregon State. Oregon State, signed with Oregon State, has some problems up there, came back to the junior college, he came out to Ames, Iowa. He's just been a great find for them. Lockwood slithering his way inside the 10. First in goal, Iowa State, believe it or not. What is he have great vision, though. Steve. The way he finds it. If he needs to go sideways through the hole, he'll do it. There's a Missouri Tiger right there. Steve Ricky doing a great job. Calling these plays, a little action here. You see the motion coming across, just give it to Rutland. That's helmet on helmet, a little holding there with offensive lineman. But it's not called, it's not a foul, is it, Artie? Nope, not if it's not called. <laughs> First and goal, Iowa State. Rutland again, big hole up the middle. Rutland banging his way down to the one. Six even, 210 pounds. And he's taking on tacklers. Offensive line, a wonderful job, a wonderful job. Arrowhead ready to explode. Florida State, they should be in this position. They've got 17 starters back this year. Everybody in the offensive line, everybody on the defensive line, and a timeout has been taken. Florida State calls it for defensive purposes. 257 left in the third. It's been a game of keep away. Iowa for Rutland in a tight formation in the eye. Rutland going over the top. Nothing doing. Third and goal right around the one. Now, one of the negatives about having a spread offense is when you've got to go to a goal line situation and be more of a power running team, you can't do it. Right there, you saw the three tight end offense by Iowa State. Now, the other day in practice, they practiced a tremendous amount of options in these situations. I think it's going to be an option to the right of the formation, away from the split end here. 
But a bootleg action, we'll see if Seneca Wallace tries it. In the eye, with one wide receiver. Wallace will keep it. Wanted to get the tight end, it was held up. Wallace in trouble. There's the footwork we've been talking about. He's going to run out of racing room. Great pursuit by Florida State. It looked like thing. they tried to look for the tight end over to the right he side. He tried to look for the tight end, but he got held up, unable to release. On that play, the tight end supposed to block down like he's going to be a running play, like it's going to be a running play, and then slip into the flat. Just didn't get off the ball. The defensive line, though, by Florida State is in the backfield. They do an excellent job of coming up the field and putting immediate pressure on Wallace. And then, obviously, it's a foot race into the backfield. Great swarm that time by the guys in the white jerseys. Kendall Pope, number nine, the outside linebacker, speed backer. 33-yard attempt from Adam Beneke, up and on its way, and it's good. His first career field goal as an Iowa State Cyclone, a young man who transferred from Rochester Community College in Minnesota. So after the long drive that started back at their own five, at least Iowa State gets something out of it. 31-17, Florida State. Better than 10 minutes. Beneke got his first career field goal. And it's a 14-point ball game. Jelka will kick it away. Gardner, Reed, waiting. And Calvin Gardner, will he bring it out five deep? No. Let's head downstairs, check in with Eric Clemens. Eric. All right, guys, thank you very much. You know, Iowa State is very serious about the Heisman candidacy of their quarterback, Seneca Wallace. You saw all his skills, and they've allocated $10,000 to a campaign to promote him. Seneca's face on the Sphinx at the pyramids of Giza there, his poster on the Eiffel Tower, and even on the Leaning Tower of Pizza. $10,000 can go a long way with a little computer graphics, huh, guys? <laughs> Right now, he'd rather have seven than three. You can see the disappointment after that long drive, Eric. Now, Florida State with the ball for only the second time in the second half. And Rick's throwing it short of Robert Morgan. This is a huge home field advantage huge, for Iowa State. Huge. There's 60,000 here, and I, I guess there's about 45 to 50 for the Cyclones. Three wide receivers set for Ricks out of the gun. Third, almost nine. Looking for his man out of the backfield. Now Ricks will have to pick it up himself. Gets a great block downfield and gets the first down. What a block by Nick Maddox. Heads up play by Maddox. He was out in the flat, didn't get the ball, came back, made the defender stop, and Cricks Ricks did a great job of getting to the outside. Take a look at Maddox here in the pocket. He's stepping back here. Iowa State rushing for a little stunt there, bringing the guy to the outside. He feels the pressure, steps up into the pocket, then makes a quick decision. This is the key right here. He makes a quick decision where he's going to go, and his uh, teammates can help him as he gets the first down. Big yardage on third and just about nine. Ricks checking off at the line. On the play fake. Bolden has a ton of room. Boy, did he push the defensive back all the way five, six yards off him. It's a first down for Florida State. And once again, it was the unbalanced formation. And when you're in an unbalanced formation, Patrick Hughes, the tight end, is ineligible. So you get an extra blocker on the perimeter, and as a result, more time to throw the ball. Will they get another snap before the end of the quarter? No. So the third quarter goes by, and believe it or not, Florida State did not score a single point after putting 31 on the board over the first 30 minutes of play. Only three between the two, and that was Beneke's 33. Now is starting to shift in this game to, to Iowa State. But they need to stop here, and they got to get the ball back, and they got to go score again. Well, because as we know, there's only 15 minutes left in the game. Not any possessions left. They might have to create a turnover. And that's the difference in the game right now. The two they gave away in the first half. First and ten, Rex. Doesn't like what he sees from the defensive front. On the quick out, it's an interception. Picked up. Atif Austin, will he go? Hit from behind. All the way to the 
25. What? They had to create the turnover, and a T. Boston timed it perfectly. The little guy. Here's Chris Ricks. Watch him drop that ball and come a little bit to the side, Artie. Did you see that? That's why that ball was picked off. That's just enough of a delay for a defensive back to make a break. That's a long throw. Let's take a look from another angle here. Watch this ball drop down and come from the side. There's nothing consistent about this motion. Once he's got to work on this. Look at that. That's a long delivery. He's got to bring that thing over the top. That's the completion. He brings it over the top. You know what? I just think it was a great play by a defensive back, knowing what Timing, play was Artie. coming. Timing. He knew what play you was coming. You can't throw that ball in high school that far across the field. Anybody will pick that ball off. You guys bookmark things, don't you? It's an end around. Lane Danielson with a little jitterbug to create five, six, keep it up. He may go the distance. Pull down from behind. He made a miss at the line of scrimmage. Finally, Ose got him in the secondary, but it didn't look like much was available to the short side of the field to begin with until he gave him that little shoulder fake. On the last drive that Iowa State had, they had been faking the ball to Lane Danielson and hitting up inside with the zone play. This time, they fake the zone play and give the ball to the junior from Dyke, Iowa, and he goes around and obviously makes a huge play. First and goal from the nine. So again, 16 on the run. Rutland cracked immediately. Almost no gain on the carry, plugging the hole in a hurry. The senior from Denver, Tony Benford. When you're faking the ball up inside and the counterman is coming around like a wide receiver is coming around, it has a tendency to freeze the defense a little bit. That time, however, Florida State's defensive front did an excellent job, led by that man, Tony Benford, of getting up the field and creating havoc on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Rutland's a single again. A tight end in motion. Second and goal. Rutland in the delay. Bouncing, spinning, and he's down inside the one. What an effort. So it'll be third and goal inches away for Hiawatha Rutland. You see Dan McCartney on the sidelines talking to Marty Fine, his offensive line coach, conversing on what play to run here. Obviously a huge play. Obviously a big change in this game if the Cyclones can get into the end zone. And this time they will not take that ball off the line of scrimmage. If they do, it's going to be an all-out bootleg, but it won't be a fake pass. Third and goal. Another tight formation, the jumbo look. And a missed handoff. Wallace will have to do it himself, and he does! That was the option, wasn't it, Artie? Yeah, that was the option I was talking about. Seneca Wallace showing the fake, taking it himself. A new ball game. There's Coach Bowden walking the sideline, got that headset on, working that gum. He knows they're in a battle right now. The first points off a turnover for Iowa State, and they had to have it. Big extra point for Adam Beneke. Seven-point ball game. Do you believe it? Florida State up 31-7 to at one point in this contest. 17 unanswered now for Iowa State. Florida State, and we're only two minutes into the fourth quarter. Back deep for the Seminoles, Talman Gardner, Willie Reed, disbelief right now on the Florida State sideline. The guys from the upper Midwest living large at this moment. Young kicks it away, tries to pin him to the boundary. It'll be Gardner from the three. What a great directional kick. He's out of bounds, right across the 20. 
to perfection by Yelk on the kickoff. Our Dr. Pep, our doctor's game summary. In the seven-point ball game, the difference right now, the turnovers early. The interception returned for a touchdown by Alonzo Jackson. That was on a screen play. And the fumble on the kickoff return by Jamal Montgomery as they recovered it and took it from the 10 and got a three-yard touchdown to Anquan Bolden. Greg Jones is the single. Jones breaking tackles. Great job for a five. And don't forget what happened in the last 65 seconds of the first down. First, a 10-yard touchdown run by Jones, and then Iowa State made the most of the opportunity and got a touchdown to the big tight end, Kyle Knock, with nine seconds left of the half. Absolutely. You know, somebody right now might question why Florida State is running the ball and not throwing. I think Coach Bowden wants to settle his young quarterback down and settle his offense down a little bit, and he do that by running the ball. Second and five. Jones, clip. He got hit on the side by the defensive back coming in, and what did he bolt in from the outside? Tyson Smith. Iowa State is just up at the line of scrimmage. They have just lost respect for Florida State's ability to go deep on them, to throw the football on them. They are up in the box, nine, ten guys looking for the tailback. When you take a look at the yards here in the second half, 124 for Iowa State, almost double of what, or it is double, of what Florida State has produced. Florida State is obviously going to throw the football here. Third and three. Three wide receivers. No tight end to the formation and two in the backfield. Ricks finds a wide open Robert Morgan. He's got a first down across the 40. Clutch on third and three. Biggest third down of the game for Florida State. Morgan is the split end. We've talked about him coming back from an injury. You're going to see Ricks in the pocket here. He's got excellent protection with two backs. But watch him run a curl here behind the linebackers. Iowa State is playing cover two. There's a void between the safeties and the linebackers. He finds the seam perfectly executed against the cover two defensive scheme. That's a pretty good read by a senior wide receiver. Great job by Morgan to sit it down and give Ricks a chance to get the ball to him. But excellent catch he made on the adjustment. Nick Maddox, the only one to the backfield. Empty quickly. And they'll set up the screen for the wide receiver. Talman Garner, not much. Only the 45, a gain of about three. Matt Ward punished him at the end of the play. What pursuit by Matt, Matt Ward. Matt Ward, I tell you, the senior from Miami is working hard tonight. He wants to beat this Florida State team. He's on the inside here. He's looking downfield, moving, 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 following the play. Just gets up off the ground. I mean, just down and back up and makes a play. That's a heady play by a senior. That's leadership. That's desire. Seven-point lead for the Seminoles. Inside of ten and a half to play. Got a second and seven. Bolt. And what a run. Nick Maddox. He was a shot in the arm in the first half. Brought down by Mark Timmons in the secondary. Matt Ward this time misses his chance. He steps up into the bucket there and doesn't make the play. They're in a 4-3 scheme. He starts to his right. He shuffles to his left, but he tries to arm tackle there. you got to accelerate through the runner and keep shuffling and keep your shoulders square. He turned an arm tackle. And yes. didn't make it. A couple of critical first downs for Florida State. Yeah, keep this drive alive. Calm down Chris Rich. Get them back in the flow. Get control of this ball game. It's Maddox on the short side of the field. And they slowed him down. Turning him in at the outset of the play was Brandon Brown. He made it the weak side backer. And he's having a big game. I like what Iowa State's doing on defense. We talked about how fast Florida State is. But you take a look at number 33, the sophomore out of Houston. He is flying all over this field today also. No points on the board yet in the second half for Florida State. Which is really unusual. You when said was, it. was the last time they had been shut out in a quarter, let alone a half? They've got better than 200 yards rushing after the last one. Changing things up. Sophomore quarterback, Chris Rex. He's in trouble. 
Great footwork. And he gets close to a first down. He's knocked out of bounds inside the 40. At about the 37. Shy of the marker. Shy of that first down by about four. And he wanted to throw the ball to the outside to his wide receiver because Iowa State was in a loose three deep coverage. But as he turned to throw it out there, the corner crept up a little bit, which is a result, Kellen. Ricks tucked the ball and took off and ran. Jeff Bowden's doing a good job with this offense dealing with a young quarterback. Florida State utilizing another timeout. They only have one remaining in the game. Prepping for the game, I was hanging out with Coach Rob, having a little bite to eat, and I asked him about Coach uh, McCartney at uh, Iowa State. He said he just loves the way he's turned that program around, and he wishes him well in the future. He thinks he's going to be a Florida State-type program there. Florida State now looking at a third and four. They've hit on 75% of their third down drives. Spread the defense again out of the gun. Here comes the blitz. Rex buys times. He's got in by Bowden. Won't get there, though. Joel, it was a safety blitz again with Mark Timmons coming off the weak side. Obviously, Ricks read it, dumped the ball off to a secondary receiver inside. But I'll tell you, the pressure that time by the Iowa State defense was the key. John Spadani, the defensive coordinator, really doing an excellent job of mixing up the blitzes, the zone blitzes, and just the cover zones. Florida State's going to go for it, but they waited so long to make the decision to go for it. Now nine seconds left yes. to go. I'm not sure they get a chance to get it off. Four and a little more than a yard. The power formation for Florida State. Jones slides his way for the first down. Did most of it by himself. And he went through the hole sideways and then backwards. That's what Florida State's got to watch out for. They got caught early with uh, the delay of game. Artie, get, what did you see here? Well, Jones up inside, but watch what happens. Iowa State guys are coming, flying up the field. And you see number 18, Timmons, there. He awakes a little bit in the hole. You got to come up and attack that a little bit more. It's really hard to keep somebody under one yard, though. Huge pickup by Jones. Make that cut back and pick up that first down. Good, Good vision. Could be the backbreaker of the game for Iowa State. Play fake. Ricks wide open. It's Gardner, and he can't hold on to the five. Hardy, he's got to stop dropping that arm. He throws that ball. The ball sails. When you do that, it makes it more difficult for the receiver to pick it up. Gardner should have caught that. Maybe should have caught that ball, but let here me, comes the I play. Know, guys, but let me tell you this. The Florida State receivers have not had a lot of contact last spring and this fall because of the injuries that happened a year ago Excellent point. to Mor I'll Morgan and Bolden. And as a result now, they're catching the ball in traffic and in contact, and they're not holding on to it because of a lack of scrimmage time. I believe that. Second and 10 outside of the 30. Let the tight end. Give it to him. Rex going for Bolden. Touchdown, Florida State. And Quan Bolden. He worked against Dallas Hobbs. Ricks took a shot at the end, and there is a flag down to the end zone. Holding or roughing the passer. Great play by Bowden. Flag in the end zone also. That's where the height advantage for Florida State. Bolden is six foot two. Hobbs five foot seven. Really came into play. We talked earlier about Florida State, the inability to use the ball over the middle of the field. The tight end was wide open. He was wide open already early. Ricks looked right past him. Two fouls on the defense. defense. Pass interference on the defense. But tonight he's going to be refused. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on the defense. That penalty accepted. The trial comes from the one and a half yard. Yeah, the roughing the passer first, but what a job to get it off. You know, quarterbacks sometimes have to pay the price, and you're going to see an example of it right here. Just getting leveled by Jordan Karsten's number 92. Way late. Yeah, way late and 300 pounds coming down on the six foot four, 210 pound Ricks. He got the ball out there and did what he was supposed to give the receiver a chance to make a play. And with this size advantage, Artie, we've been yeah. asking all day, why haven't you done this? 
It'll be on the kickoff. And what about the play all night long, though? Second touchdown reception for Antoine Bolden. A guy that missed all of last season with a torn ACL. He looks like he's all the way back early. And we talked about him being a quarterback. He's an excellent athlete. We saw it there. It's gone. It's gone now. Now, now. Bethia to give the extra point. So Ricks took the hit, but found Bolden in the end zone. Breathing room now for Florida State. On top by a 14. Do you know what it is? Quarter, hard fought battle. K State quarterback Jonathan Beasley diving into the end zone to seal the victory 27 to 7. Now, Iowa State down by 14 as we welcome you back to Arrowhead. 8 14 to play. It'll be Michael Wagner. Just shy of the 10 yard line, so 90 yards to the end zone for Iowa State. If they can get there, though, don't forget they still have all three of their timeouts remaining. And the pressure's on the quarterback, Seneca Wallace, here. He's got to make a play either by throwing the ball or utilizing his feet in terms of scrambling around. Do you know how he got his name, Joel? Seneca Wallace? His mom named him after a soap opera actor from Ryan's Hope. A guy by the name of Seneca Bolak, because his mom wanted him to be a doctor, and that guy was a doctor on the soap opera. That's why he's named Seneca. Research, Artie, just research. I know, it's I mean, amazing. You, isn't are, it? you are the best. From the nine yard line, <laughs> I gotta do more homework to catch up with you guys. Wagner cracked on the spin, maybe three at the most. Jarrell Hudson, the middle linebacker, the senior from Homestead, Florida. Uh, that's dead. Well, you had the feeling, even with Florida State going and marching down the field like they did, taking almost five minutes off the clock, the 80 yard drive, regardless of the outcome of this game. Dan McCartney can now say to his team, hey, wait a minute, we're down 31 to 7 against one of the top two or three teams in the nation. And it works. Second and seven. Go to the field, Lane Danielson. He's got a first down across the 20. Coaches will tell you that there are no moral victories, but to have a showing like this on national television in front of a national audience for Iowa State to be playing with Florida State in the fourth quarter, that's the next step for this Iowa State program, Marty, is to beat a ranked team and to beat them in front of a national audience. And this man right here, this football team, reflects this man's determination and his personality and his perseverance that he's going to make Iowa State football good and very competitive, and he has. Ratlin hurdling the tackle. Gets about three, and you guys touched on it a little bit in the first half. Remember, it's going to be a very difficult year for Iowa State, as much as they have Seneca Wallace. They've got, in the preseason polls, number two, Oklahoma. Number three tonight, Florida State. Number four, Texas. Number seven, Colorado. Tenth-ranked, Nebraska. And besides those five, they've also got road games with Kansas State and Iowa. Play at home as well against Texas Tech. It'll be interesting. Second and about eight. The out, and it was an in. As Montgomery turned in, so it became... A ball that wasn't catchable. Wrong route was run. Or the quarterback mixed up one or the other because Seneca Wallace thought it was an out. You know, you, you, you talk about that schedule. Iowa State is the only team in the Big 12, as you see the upcoming games, that plays Colorado, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Texas. Nobody else in the league plays those four teams except Iowa State. They've got to get a better agent. Yeah. And I asked him the other day, what do you think of the schedule? He said, well, they ought to put the Oakland Raiders and the Vikings <laughs> on it, too. They might beat the Vikings. Third and eight with 6.24 to play. Underneath, Hiawatha Rutland. You know, Close to the 30, and they'll have to go for it. Down by 14. Michael Bulwer on the hit. What we're not seeing tonight, which I was, I thought we might see, is the old Florida State defense, where those defensive ends are coming upfield, yeah. putting pressure on the quarterback. They really missed that last year. Their sacks were down two-thirds 
from the total the previous year in 2001. Yeah, they had 45 in 2000. They had 15 a 50, year ago. Two-thirds. I mean, that production, they can't win a national championship with uh, that type I, of I, I agree. I totally agree. A decision for Iowa State. Man, they need a timeout. We'll come back to Kansas City. But you got to go for it here, Without a doubt. obviously. Without it's a just, doubt. just a matter of what the selection and the play call is. Seneca Wallace is going to come to the line, make some hard counts, try to draw them offside. Uh, you if know not, what, Kellen? Run the play. I don't think so. I think it might be the option again because this is the formation they've been running the option in last year and in practice. It'll be a fake on the edge. Seneca Wallace, little pop pass wide open the tight end. First down, but the ball is popped out and it'll go out of bounds. A break for Iowa State. Kenny Segan, the sophomore from Ankeny, Iowa, with his first catch of the season. Not a bad time for it. Ricky, offensive coordinator. Great play call here on the bottom, as you see Sagan come across the field. Excellent footwork and ball handling by Seneca Wallace. And the timing of this thing was just absolutely perfect. And that's some guts there. Watch that defender, number 10, Stanford Samuels, just jar the ball out. That's called good pursuit and thinking about turnovers. Turnovers That's good get the ball to the middle, but a gussy call by Steve Ricky, the offensive coordinator of Iowa State. And, and the right call. That's that's great. Good and a Missouri stuff. Tiger. And a Missouri Still Tiger. Still hope for the Iowa State Cyclones. From the 39 of Florida State. Going for the home run ball with Montgomery and it's batted away. What, what a, a job by Samuels. What a play. What a job. What a timing play for the junior from Miami. You know, Samuels is a guy who was talking during the summer that he wants to be like Deion Sanders or Terrell Buckley. He keeps making plays like that. He'll be in their category. And Kellen, he was the most valuable player for the defense this spring at Florida State. But it depends on his wardrobe. He wants to be like Deion. <laughs> now, who, hey. Who's his tailor? Hey. Trust me on this one. He runs fast enough on the field. The rest of that stuff will take care of itself. That was a big time play. Big time play. Three wide receivers for Wallace out of the shotgun on second and ten. Now Wallace with a wide one did a good job. That was almost by him on the snap. Seneca Wallace. Well, a positive, but he's knocked out of bounds after only a yard, if that. He may be out right at the 39, but it was a low line drive snap. I think you're right, Joel. I don't think he had control of the ball, and he was bobbling it well, a little bit, a little bit to the side there. To the right. And as a result, he obviously didn't get total possession of the ball. Gutsy performance by Iowa State. Seneca Wallace not quitting. Teammates not quitting. All right. Zach Butler right there, the emotional leader of this team, the heart and captain, soul. returning starter. That was a fastball low and away. <laughs> Left-handed or right-handed? Our man Zach, when he's in shotgun, he's going left-handed. Left Southpaw. Now third and a little more than ten. Show the blitz and back off. Just a three-man rush. Plenty of time for Wallace. He's got no covering. State simply won't go away. The end of a 91-yard drive. That's how much they want this. Big one coming up for Beneke. Not Tex Beneke, but Adam Beneke. To make it a seven-point margin. And it's a game once again. Plenty of time left. 526 remaining. The ball is in the air. Montgomery does a tremendous job of running through the ball. He obviously split the seam. It was a three deep zone. He ran right down the middle of it. The ball was delivered perfectly. Touchdown. B.J. Ward, the free safety already got out of position. When Seneca Wallace broke protection, B.J. Ward, the free safety, lost his position and let the receiver get behind him and had to try to make, some, make up for that yardage. He couldn't do it. Gardner over to the near side. He'll take the high short one from his own three. Just across the 20. 
out to the 23 yard line. So Florida State tries to play keep away. More than we could have bargained for at 31 to 7. And that's how many Florida State led by early. They were up by 24. Jones can't get outside, but stiff arms nicely for next to Yardley, too. He's got it to the 27 for a gain of four. Clewis was the man he was fending off with a straight Great stiff arm. Gutty, gutty performance. Gutty swarming by the Cyclone defense. You need about three guys to bring this guy down. Thunder, as they call Greg Jones, is difficult to bring down. But when you got about four red shirts around them, it makes the job easier. And I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm looking at this Florida State offensive line. They're lollygagging around a little bit. They don't seem as fired up, Kellen, as they were at the beginning of this game. They better get some zip back. See if the Seminoles keep it on the ground. It's a gain of a little more than five. Jones again, big hit. He's got it across the 40 in the first down. As we mentioned, his size a big factor. Just look at him. He's about 250. Brought down finally in the secondary by Brandon Brown. Greg Jones takes the ball off the right side. It's had a good old-fashioned power play. And there is no Cyclone defender there. Obviously, Iowa State, not obviously, but they were in stunt that time. And as a result, the hole opened up. The linebacker, Matt Ward, did not get there. Now he's got, Greg Jones does, over 100 yards tonight. For the third, third consecutive yes. game going back to last season. Jones. Bouncing. And then Bulldog down on his back, uh, T. Austin. Teddy will play by Jones to stay in bounds, get that clock running. Get this game over with. This is a this is a drive. That's a gut check for Florida State. They've got to come out here and establish themselves. Because right now, other teams are watching this game and saying, "Hey, we can beat these guys." And I think it's smart by the coaching staff to run the football here and make the offensive line get going. Because as I said, they were they kind of think walking around slowly here. But if you run the ball, you force them to get off the ball. You force them to go hard. And that's what Coach Bowden and his son Jeff Bowden are doing right now. Second, just two about six. Brown, would it be able to turn the corner? No! Torpedoed by Jermaine Billups, a young man who made the move from running back to safety this year. And there is a flag down on the play right at the original line. Jermaine Billups had a big hit earlier. This is the guy who's moved from the running offensive back. side of the ball, running back over to safety. Big mark off, personal foul. If it's five, maybe you think about taking the play, but 15, you take the penalty. Absolutely. Well, I don't foul. think there's a decision Listen there foul. for Iowa State. The offense late hit. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Turn down. And Bobby Bowden will not like this because it's a lack quote of discipline on your football team. It's frustration is what yes, it, it is. Or you take a shot at a guy who's probably been up in your face all day long, who's been like a pest around you, you've been trying to get rid of him, but Iowa State just keeps hanging around, causing Florida State problems, letting, you know, forcing him to make mistakes. And this is what this is. They've got to get themselves together. Florida State I'm talking about, pull themselves together, if they're going to be considered a top 10 team and move this ball down the field. Hey, Kellen, Here forget we go, the top guys. 10. They're going to win. Go. And it was a dead ball foul on a late hit, so it's third down third and down. 21. Three man rush. Ricks. Hit for his way down. Tyson Smith, the right end. are warming up in Kansas City. Do you feel the pressure? You can feel the excitement. Do you feel the pressure? I feel overtime, maybe. Chris Ricks had no reason to come out of that pocket except for the fact he was trying to force something to happen. Here's Florida State. They can't get lined up on special teams. Waiting back deep, Todd Miller for Iowa State. Waltney gets into it and sends out a beauty. Miller needs a block. Gets one. Nice return as he's hit around the shoulder pads. Up to the 35. 
Dallas, so 65 yards away from the tie for Iowa State. And the momentum here is all in Iowa State's behalf. The crowd is in Iowa State's behalf. You take a look at this record, 0-29 against ranked teams since 1993. Well, they got a chance to put a one in front of that if they can score here and then kick it in regulation or get it to overtime. Remember now, Iowa State did beat Florida State back in 1975, 10-6. In, in Tallahassee, In no Tallahassee, less. of course. <laughs> it was before Bobby Bowden came from West Virginia. <laughs> and, and I was still in high school, so I didn't care. You're in high school. You're in your 10th year yeah. as a senior. Danielson, the motion man, and a bad snap. Danielson trying to make something out of nothing. It's a loss back to the 28, though. Great penetration by the big man, Kevin Emanuel. Otherwise, Daniels would may be able to get back to the line. And you know the, the, the offensive coaches, uh, Steve uh, Bricky from um, Iowa State, has got a tough decision here. What do you do? Do you, do you take the clock and say, okay, we're going to drive the ball, run the ball, throw it, or do you just air it out? Snap a little bit better this time. Wallace on the edge. And Hiawatha Rutland back to the original line. So it's going to be third and about ten. Brought down by Kendall Polk, the junior from Fort White, Florida. Now, you got to remember here, Joel and Kellen, you got two plays to get the first down. You're going to go for it on fourth down. But the so clock is running it down to 146. No, you but better do it quickly. No, I know, you still have two but you have, Yeah, but you have two plays here is what I'm saying. So get five or six and then get the other five or six. On third and a little less than ten. Quick out. Yeah, Rutgers got the first down. The drive and the game is still alive for Iowa State. He pushed back Samuels, the corner on that side. There's no pass rush. Nobody's in Seneca Wallace's face. This is not the Florida State defense that we thought we would see this year based on their performance last year. They haven't even come close to this kid. The executive producer of Fox Sports Net is Bill Borson, coordinating producer of College Football Saturday, Roy Hamilton, Gary Garcia. Tonight's game produced by Mike Kelly, directed by Ken Fouts, senior vice president, field operations, Andrea Berry. And the vice president of field operations is Karen Newman. First and ten, Iowa State. The shortstop on the slam. And Montgomery has a pass interference call made on Rufus Brown. That'll stop the clock and save a timeout. Minute 29 left. It's the slant pattern. We talked about it before. It's usually either a complete or a pass interference because the defensive back, if he lets him inside the receiver, is in an awkward position. He put his hand on his back. Pass interference on a defense. That's what they're calling. Got his Let's hand go. all over his back. Now, food for his thought down the road. If you get into the end zone, do you think about two instead of overtime? In a second, yes. But here's Rufus Brown just all over him. That's an excellent call by the officials. I think you go for one, Joel, to answer your question and go to overtime. You can't take that chance and lose the game by not making two. From the 43 of Florida State. Wallace again out of the gun. Blitz coming off the edge. There's a... Pass for Whitford, and he took it away from the defensive back, Leroy Smith. It was up for grabs. Whitford played the angles well. Florida State goes into wholesale changes on that front defensive line. They're not getting any pressure with those guys. They're going to try another four. And of only three. Down to a minute to play. Hiawatha Rutland. And now you better use a timeout. So they tried to fool him on a quick inside play. And Iowa State does call timeout with 54 seconds remaining. It's third and about six. Well, the expectations for the Florida State Seminoles with a little fun with head coach Bobby Bout, especially a lot of fun when we heard his response. Win it all. That's our goal is to win it all. It's, it's been our goal for 15 years. We've come close for 15 years, too, you know, except last year. But when you're in the top four every year, I mean, that means if it's basketball, you're being a, you're being a finals every year, you know? And so our people, I mean, you think I can go up to my alumni and say, you're yeah, number three. <laughs> we want to be number four. We want to be number two. <laughs> it's one. It's one. You cannot help but love that guy. <laughs> he is such a fun person to be around. He's great for college football, and when he retires, and hopefully not very soon, we are all going to miss him from this great game. And he has no intentions of retiring soon. He says based on his health, he's in great shape. He's lost weight. 
He feels great. He loves being around the young and, kids. And he, they energize him. And he's so fired up this year, guys. He's come down from the tower during practice and actually gotten on the practice field, something he hasn't done in the last five or six years. So he is really making everybody be a little bit more competitive down in Tallahassee. All right, what do they have out of the timeout? Third and a little more than five. Two snaps to get it. Otherwise, it's Florida State's game. Timeout remaining for each team. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Montgomery's got the first down. That'll stop the clock. It's outside of the 32, first and 10. Samuels got there in a hurry, but Montgomery knew where he needed to go. And another thing that the defensive line of Florida State is not doing, look at their hands when they rush the passing. They're all down. Seneca Wallace is six feet tall at the most. Get your hands up. Try to knock the ball down. They all have their hands down by their sides. Wallace got to be hit from behind. And now they'll use their final timeout. What a sack by the young man that took it back for a score. Alonzo Jackson returned an interception 48 yards in the first half. And I was just going to make a comment. What a great job the Iowa State offensive line is doing tonight. But that time, Jackson came around the corner on a speed rush and obviously got the sack. But going back to the Iowa State offensive line, they got two guys starting the offensive line that have never played offense in a regular game. You're going to see Jackson, who's one of the better athletes on the team, come around the corner on the right side here. He's just going to come up the field and beat Casey Sheldon and come underneath him or around him. Excellent job by Alonzo Jackson. He was given an award this spring as the most dominating player on both sides of the ball in spring practice. Big play. They needed that. Seneca Wallace has not been pressured at all in the second half. He's set back there in the pocket and has picked them apart as they play that soft zone. He's taken the big shot and he's taken what they've given him underneath. You know, I know you're getting on uh, Florida State's defensive line a little bit, but Jeff Womble, one of their starters, defensive tackles, was suspended and he's going to miss two games so he was the guy that would have helped their pass rush inside he and was know, a guy he was a guy who's good against the run right. and one guy but doesn't make defense that much advance have not gotten a fist I, and we know the history of florida state in their defense advance second and 17. seneca wallace and the cyclones out of timeouts trying to use the boundary and it's incomplete now you've got to start thinking about the end zone as well with 28 seconds to play. Good call, Joel, because that time Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, lined up with three rush men, six underneath cover guys, and two deep cover guys. There was nowhere to throw the football underneath. No rush, but nowhere to throw it underneath. Just want to keep them right in front of you. They need a touchdown to get it back into this ball game, so don't give it up. Don't do what you did in the, at the end of the first half. You can't give up a score. 295 yards passing for Seneca Wallace on 21 of 32. Can he get it done? He's got a good lane to look through, and he's got Lane Danielson. He's close to a first down. I believe he's got it. That'll stop the clock. He does have it. He stops it with 21 seconds to play. A seven-point ball game. Carter and Hudson converging late. Huge throw, great throw by Seneca Wallace. Sister in the pocket, picks out his guy, just threads the needle between two linebackers. He's losing seconds now. Still a three-man rush. Wallace eludes the pressure. He's going to get the first down to stop the clock again. Gets a block, can he find the end zone? No. He's knocked out of bounds at the one. Oh, boy. what a run. Four seconds left to go. A huge block downfield by a wide receiver. I hope we have the replay. What an amazing run. And did he get the football to the end zone as he went parallel to the ground? He's inbounds. Oh, awful close. Awful close. In the NFL, we might have to take a look at that we one. We would be a replay. Obviously, there here's the go. play of the year. Will we play right here? Time or not? Rutland in the eye. The option. Wallace has a crease. Doesn't get there. It's over, and Florida State prevails. What a stop by the Seminoles. Indecision. 
indecision. He wasn't sure if he wanted to take it. That was a great angle by our camera crew. You can see the look on his face. He decided, I don't know if I want to get it. Then he went for it. It was too late. And listen to these Iowa State Cyclone fans. Final snap of more than we could have ever asked for on opening night on Fox Sports Net. The last and, snap for Seneca Wallace and, and the Cyclones. As practiced the other day, this is all they worked on on the goal line. You're going to see Wallace come down the line of scrimmage. Literally number 45 gives a block, but number nine, Kindo Pope, does a tremendous job of feathering the pitch and coming off on Wallace. Look at number nine right there. That's an excellent job by him of basically taking away two components of the option. Outstanding defensive play by number nine, Kindle Pope. An amazing conclusion to a phenomenal football game. 31-7 early. Florida State only to see Iowa State come back and give them everything they wanted. Gussy performance by Seneca Wally. This young man should keep his head up high. I mean, they, he just took this team, put it on his shoulders, and carried them almost down to victory. Dan McCartney, always being the professional coach, wants his guys to handle this with class, act like you've been there before. Antoine Bolin, his first game in better than a year. Torn ACL last year, seven catches, two scores. Our Dr. Pepper, player of the game. Let's check in one more time All with right. Eric Clements. Eric. Bobby Bowden, well, you got off to a great start and had to hold on your assessment of this whole thing. They just never died. What did they? They would never die. The quarterback. Hey, same to you and good luck to you. The quarterback just, oh, I, we're very lucky to win the darn game. Let's just say that. What, what, what do you tell a team after a game like this? I mean, you get out top 31-7 and everybody thinks, hey, Florida State is looking really good. What happened? Did you guys let down a little? No, we didn't. We didn't try to let down. We tried to win it, but we just were not sharp. They beat us to the punch. I thought they just did a better job of coaching and everything else than we did. You still got the win, though, Coach. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah we got the win. Thank, Thank you very much. much. You. All right. Let's go back to Joel Myers. Joel? Thank you, Eric. I know I, for one, will never, ever forget the opening of the 2002 college football season. And the spark that's given, that's been given to this Iowa State football program will do them a lot of good all year long because they know they can compete. This gives them something to build on next week when they play Kansas, a Big 12 North match.